have a vacancy in this position right now. Uh, we're going to get you in and out as quickly as we can. Mr. Gordon? I, I was looking for Matt Gordon. Matt was here a minute ago. Okay. You stepped out. I don't uh, the other thing I understand, I, I, hi, Matt, be with you in just a second. Uh, I understand you've got about 30 continuances that you wanted to announce. And let's go ahead and do those and we'll get those people out of here and relieve some of the crowding. Oh, you, you don't have that ready yet? No, not yet. Okay, let me know. Uh, Matt Gordon, yes, hi. Sir. You've probably only got one case. We do. And uh, Mr. Flowers, Mr. Shaw are present. Ah, okay. I remember the case. Sure. Thank you for calling our case out of order. Uh, this is the case of Tristan Parker. All right. <clears throat> Mr. Shaw is present for Mr. Parker, Your Honor. Gentlemen, what do you have for me? Uh, good morning, Judge. Tim Shaw for Tristan Parker. Um, we're asking for a two-cycle continuance. As the court's aware, this is a brand new case. Okay. Uh, a lot of there's going to be a lot of physical evidence that's been and a lot's already been sent off to FDLE and the labs for. My recollection years. is he's in custody. That's correct. So he's Judge. probably not up yet. The prisoners were just arriving a minute ago. That's correct, Judge. And um, we can call him back out if. if the court I can do it however you want. Um, I think it's appropriate to just go ahead and continue at two cycles, Judge. Okay. I stipulate to that. Your so order. that would be. Two cycles. The next thing I've got is April twenty fourth. Uh, that'd be fine, Judge. It's, okay. It's, I, I don't. I don't have anything in March. We, uh, and I, I think judge, the investigation should be complete by then, and discovery in process. Okay. And, and Judge, uh, as the court may recall, we had a couple of motions set. Uh, well, we had a, a motion for bond reduction set, and we were here before the state had indicated they were going to file their own motion for pretrial detention. We'll get those reset on the court's docket as well. And for the clerk's uh, sake, uh, we did have a tentative date on January the 5th. I want to make sure that's not on the books right now. We'll have uh, that uh, date scheduled in the near future. Correct. You know more than I do. Thank you, Thank sir. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, Council, do you want to call the private council cases next? That's fine, Your Honor. Okay. Now, are these defendants' names for the private? Those are all the private attorney names, I believe. The, okay. And, Council, I'm going to apologize to you. These are handwritten, and I'm not sure how well I can read all of them. Uh, Lanessa Dudley? Dudley? It's du Dudley. Okay. I'm going to get some of them wrong. Yes, sir. <laughs> Who do you have? You know, I have several have waivers on file for all my clients. Yes, ma'am. The first case I have is David Cornell and 21 CF 376, 22 CF 2224. I would like to leave him set for docket day. I your, believe. Okay. Is your client here? He, I have a waiver on file, Your Honor. Okay. Thank you. All right. I want to set, set for docket day. The next docket day. Now, the next docket day I have is January 3. Yes, you you yes, want sir. that one? Yes, all sir. Right. Very good. Um, the next one I have is John Elmore, 22 CF 2580. Your Honor, we are asked for a continuance, but we ask that it be charged to the state. We are still missing body camera, and we only have one officer listed in discovery, and it was a search warrant case. Does they wish to be heard? Uh, Ariana Leone, for the state, Your Honor, I have spoken with defense, and I agree with the, what she, with the request. Um, when do you want it reset for? Uh, the next pretrial. The next pretrial I have is February 27th. Yes, sir. The next case I have is Chase Glover. It's 22 CF 1170. We're asking for continuance for the next pretrial. No objection from February the state. February 27th. The next one I have is Destiny, Destiny Jackson, 22 CF 2249. We'd like, like to leave that set for the docket day on the 3rd. All right, January 3rd. Okay. Um, Earl McKay in 22 CF 2576. We'll ask for a continuance to the next pretrial. No objection. That's February 27th. 
The last one I have, Your Honor, is Krista Spears in 19 CF, 1862, 20 CF, 781, 20 CF, 951, 21 CF, 39, and 22 CF, 2042. We'll ask for a continuance of the next pretrial. Okay. That's February 27th. I believe that's all I have. Thank you, Ms. Dudley. Thank you, Your Honor. Got it right the second time. Yes, sir. <laughs> Byron Cotton. Good morning, Your Honor. Good morning, Mr. Cotton. Good morning, Judge. Your Honor, the first case I have on your docket is going to be Karen Lehman. Well, actually, we'll do Mr. Jamison since yeah, he's okay. present. Okay. <laughs> your Honor, Mr. Jamison, um, for the record, Byron Cotton, 21 CF 1042. Uh, we fought a, a motion for continuance in advance, but I know with the rotating judges, it's right now it's a little bit <laughs> hard to know. That's right. It was stipulated by the state judge. The state is, uh, we're, they're waiting on some information from us on an expert witness, and then a deposition is going to be set, so we're requesting a continuance. That's to the next pretrial? Yes, sir. That's February 27th at 9 o'clock. Okay. Thank you, Judge. We'll see you, you then. All right. Thanks, you're good. Next case I have, Judge, is Karen Lehman, L-E-H-M-A-N. You know, I've spoken with the state on this. Uh, I th we're working on resolving this case um, based on our discussion. I think what we'd like to do is pass it to the next pretrial conference. My client has some issues in Alabama. She's working out there as well. Um, so we're working toward a global resolution. No objection. All we can do is we can reset it. Shut up. Your Honor, the next case I have is actually from my partner, Mike Gates. The name is Francisco Garcia. G-A-R-C-I-A. -A. That is a new case, uh, 22 CF 2751. Mr. Gates is requesting a continuance on behalf of his client on that case. February 27th? Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you, Judge. That's all I have before the court. Thank you. Yes, sir. Good to see you. Nice to see you, sir. Yes, sir. John Green. Good morning, Your Honor. John Green appearing on behalf of Victoria Cameron in case number 21-1558. Sir, what's your preference today? Judge, we had to reschedule our depositions that were set for December 19th. We moved to continue this matter to the next pretrial conference date and charge it to the state if we might. Uh, that is correct, Your Honor. Um, I agree with the fans. Very good. It'll be February 27th, delay charge to the state. And that's all I have, Judge. Thank, Thank you. you, Mr. Green. Mike Flowers. Good morning, Your Honor. Your Honor, the first matter is William Johns. Yes, sir. Your Honor, in, in discussing this with the state, we're asking that this be continued for two cycles. There's no objection to that, Judge. That would that's be correct, Your Honor. April 24th. Yes, sir. Uh, Sixto Rivera, Mr. Rivera is present. We're, he, he's present with us, Your Honor. We're asking that this matter be continued. Your Honor, excuse me. Stop. No. Um, Your Honor, good morning. May I make a statement? I don't know. What do you want to talk about? Judge, I would like to request that all my charges will be dismissed due to the false statement made by the state and no, sir, made stop. by the police. Stop. Stop. You're entitled to a trial. Your lawyer has to file any motions for you. Right now, a, excuse me, sir. Do yes. not interrupt the judge, please. Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. Never a good idea to interrupt the judge unless there's yes, a Honor. fire behind him. Now, your lawyer has to file any motions, including a motion to dismiss. I don't want to, so that's why I'm doing it. Well, then you can't do it. While you have a lawyer, you can't file motions of your own. So, Mr. Flowers, you're no longer my attorney. I'll be pleased to file an appropriate motion. Mr. Shaw's, I think, may be attorney of that, record. He'll that, join in it, Judge. I'll be pleased to do so. May I make just one statement, Your Honor? Just one, and I'll be. you got about 30 seconds. The false statement made by the state have already cost over $10,000 in stolen property by the alleged now, victim who now, was determined to stop, be. Stop, stop, stop. The did, did, did you understand understand what I said when yes, I Your came Honor. in? No, I, hold on. I'm a substitute judge today. You're probably never going to see me again. I don't know why you think it's important to tell me this. I just want to have Okay, you've this. unburdened yourself of it, and I'm glad we've given you I, an opportunity I, I to do I that. want this injustice to be over, Your Honor. Mr. Flowers, I can't relieve you I as understand. his attorney uh, without having, uh, I can't remember the name of the hearing, uh, no, it, uh, without having a Nelson hearing. We'll file the appropriate and, document. And I'm not in a position to do a Nelson hearing today. We just simply don't have the time to do it. If you'll file an appropriate motion, sir, we'll bring it in. 
a judge, it may be me, it may be someone else, there are some, there are some procedures that we have to do. Actually, thank you, thank you are, for actually, actually Mr. Flowers, are you pri privately retained? Yes, sir. I mean, he can, he can dismiss you if he wishes. If he does, I've got to offer him private count, uh, offer him appointed counsel. I don't know whether he'll qualify. I understand, Judge. Light show. Um, we'll move as quickly as okay. we can on that matter. Very good. Mr. Mr. Flowers is going to file a motion for leave to withdraw. That'll come up maybe before me, maybe before another judge, and we'll do it. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Your Honor. Jonathan Roller, Your Honor. Judge, in discussing with the state, we're going to continue this matter without objection from the state. That's correct, Your Honor. To February 27th? That'll be fine, Your Honor. <laughs> Rivera. Rivera. Yeah. Keisha Jackson, Your Honor. Mm -hmm. We're asking that this be continued. I believe two cycles to the April 24th is the most April sensible way to approach it. April 24th at 9 o'clock for the next pretrial. Yes, Your Honor. Very good. Kennedy, Robert Kennedy. We believe that February 27th would be appropriate to continue it, and there's no objection that I'm aware of from the state. February 20th, in a lot, without objection from the state. Now, I'll assume there's no objection unless somebody stands up and says something. <laughs> yes, Your Honor. <laughs> without objection from the state, February 27th at 9 o'clock. Your Honor, with the court's permission, Mr. Coy Browning is counsel of record for Melissa Fournier. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Browning cannot be here today. We are, of course, covering. Yes, sir. His, this case will be a continuance. The plea will be entered February 27th. That's been negotiated with the state. Uh, yes, That's satisfactory. Yes, Good. February 27th, then, for that case. And the last matter, and this is Mr. Coy Browning's case also, is, and it's spelled R O U K O Z, if I'm not mistaken. February continuance also without objection is what Mr. Browning had advised our office. No objection. Uh, Your Honor, I believe that's all I have this Thank morning. you, Mr. Flowers. Thank you, sir. Tim Shaw. Morning, Judge. <coughs> Tim Shaw, first case I have is Jesse Alexander Hartzog, uh, 20 CF 2976. We'll leave that set for docket day without subpoenas. Try it on the next docket. It's if it's January 3rd for the January 9th trial day? Yes, sir. Thank you. Um, Judge, I was also asked to cover for Jay Patel. Uh, he has uh, Nicholas, N-I-C-K-L-E-S-S. -S. Um, asking to continue that one cycle. No objection. It'll be February 27th at 9 o'clock. And Jonathan Brown also continue one cycle. No objection. February 27th at 9 o'clock. And lastly, Judge, uh, I'm covering for Greg Wibbs as well. He has Jerry LeBlanc, 22 CF 1788. He's asked to continue that one cycle. No objection. February 27th at 9 o'clock. Thank you, Judge. That's all I have. Thank you, sir. Uh, Ricky, is it Diaram? Diaram? Diaram. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. I have one case on the docket. William Garcia, 22 CF 944, and I do have a written plea. May I approach? And it is a plea to all. Where is he? Where's your client? Okay. Is, this, is the state satisfied to do this without the defendant here present? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. It's okay for this. All right. I do have a written plea which to misdemeanor offenses, which appears to be appropriately executed and notarized. I didn't notarize. The defendant attorney's file a certificate. The court will accept that plea. Count one is to a lesser included offense of assault on a law enforcement officer. Uh, there's an adjudication of guilt. Count two is as charged adjudication of guilt. Count three is null prost, correct? That is correct, Your Honor. Count four is to a lesser included offense of possession of marijuana, first degree misdemeanor. There's a withhold of adjudication on that. On all these counts except count, and count five is as charged, on all those counts except count three, um, 
is 11 months, 29 days of probation. He's to forfeit the firearm that was involved, take prescribed mental health medications, attend all mental health appointments, letter of apology to Christina Keyes, uh, $270 in court cost, $50 cost of prosecution, complete anger management or the weekly equivalent with mental health counselor, no acts or threats of violence against anyone, no illegal substance without a prescription. Probation can be transferred to Alachua County where he resides. Thank you, Your Honor. You. Have a good day. Your Honor. Let's see if I can sit down. Uh, we're going to have to arrange for him to be fingerprinted somewhere, Mr. Dyer. Right. And Your Honor, Charles Beer with probation, we need him here. We need him. Okay. Well, I'm going to give him 20 days to present himself here uh, to probate to the probation office. Failing which, this will be everything I've done today will be vacated, and we'll be back where we started. Or within 20 days of the probation, is that correct? Yes, sir. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, Junior, is it Farquharson? What, what is your last name, sir? I'm having trouble reading it. Farquharson, that's good. Farquharson. Okay, good. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Yeah, I'm Junior Fox on behalf of Matthew Sims. I um, would like um, the last week on the trial docket. Oh, okay. Yeah, hold on. Let's, we, we have your client here. We'll bring yeah, him out. Yeah. <clears throat> And is, is that going to be February 16th? What, once you, do you have two weeks of trial docket? We do, Your Honor. Um, that would be the second, third Requ week in January, I believe. I think the first one. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, January 17th, not February. January 17th. It's January 17th. That's a four-day week because the Monday is a holiday. I, I, Okay, your client is out now. Uh, you've asked for the uh, second trial week, which is January 17th. Does he come in for the docket day on January 3rd? Put it on docket day, Judge, just to keep well. it on track. Just in case. Okay, thank you. January 3rd for the docket day, January 17th for your trial. Thank you. Thank you. Do you have anybody else? Justine Turner. Justina Turner. Good morning. Justina Turner, on behalf of Max Alvarado, case 19 CF 2316. Mr. Alvarado has previously filed a, a waiver of appearance in this matter. Um, we would ask for a continuance in this matter. My understanding is that would be, has already been agreed to, with by the state. Although the prosecutor I spoke with was um, Michelle Sandler, who's not present, Your Honor. Objection. February 27th at 9 o'clock. Thank you, Your Honor. That's all I have. Thank you. Brandy Merrifield. Good morning, Your Honor. Good morning, Ms. Merrifield. My cases should be found under my partner's name, Flaherty. Ah, okay, Flaherty. very good. That's right. I saw that slash play, but I, uh, I don't know who people are here. That's okay, Judge. <laughs> the first case I have is Paul Guy, 22 CF 242, 542, uh, and 1528. There is a waiver on file. I spoke with ASA Berickman, and we agreed to a, a continuance in this case while we continue to negotiate. So I'd request the 227 day. January, uh, February 27th at 9 o'clock. Yeah, thank you. The next case is Justin Murphy, 22 CF 2106. There's also a waiver on file. I'd like to leave him set for docket day for plea or continue. Very good. Jan January 3rd for a plea or continuance. The next case is Jonathan Rogers in 22 CF 2378. <laughs> There is a waiver on file. It is the first time up. Uh, we, the state has not filed an information on this case, so the case would naturally need to be continued. However, we request that it be tried or charged to the state. Yes, Your Honor, we're still waiting on uh, FDLE results. Very so. good. Do you want February 27th or April? We can put it on just to track it. Okay, Probably. February 27th at 9 o'clock. And the last one I have, Judge, is Alyssa Schwartz in 22 <coughs> CF 2331. She's already set for entry of a plea on 1229.
Very good. That's all I have. Happy day after tomorrow. Very good. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Brad Stewart. Good morning, Your Honor. Morning, Mr. Stewart. May it please the court, Your Honor, Brad Stewart, present. The first client I have on the docket is Matthew Bachman, Judges 21 CF 2261. This may be removed from the docket at this point. I don't know, Judge. We had we had a stipulated motion to continue that was filed with order. If you sent an order over, it's been signed. Very good. Judge, my next client is Jordan Kelly Vest. This is 22 CF 1837, Judge. We do need to continue this. We are in the process of uh, perfecting depositions. February, February 27th at 9 o'clock. Judge, my next client is uh, Christopher Merricks. If we can leave this on for docket day. We've already entered a plea, Judge. We're just doing uh, execution of sentence. January 3rd, then, at uh, 9 o'clock. Judge, my next client is uh, Julius Myrick, Judge. Two cases, uh, 22 CF 1308 and 1310. <clears throat> judge, if we could leave this on for docket day for plea or continue. Very good. January 3rd. Your Honor, my next client is uh, Mr. Mark Perez. This is a companion case with the Kelly Vest case, Judge. I do need to continue this as well. Without objection, Your Honor. Was the other one on January 27th? I don't know. I just need to be sure. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. I believe we moved it to the 27th. Great. Okay. okay. Very good. Your Honor, that's all I have uh, for the uh, I'm sorry. I am covering for Mr. Bo Powell, Mr. Gillis Powell III, Judge. Yes, sir. He has one matter on the docket, Jerry Davis, 22 CF 710. Uh, he has a, he's informed me, he has a stipulated continuance motion and order was filed. Unless it came in yesterday <laughs> uh, or late Friday, it's been signed. If it's if there's an order in it's, it, it'll be signed. Very good. It may have already been. I just don't remember who I signed him on. And for the record, we can that'll be set for uh, January twenty seventh. Yes. Very good, Your Honor. That's all I have. May be excused. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Mr. Stewart. Dustin Durrell. Good morning, Your Honor. Good morning, sir. Please court Dustin Durrell on behalf of Mr. Juan Santillon. Mr. Santillon. Your Honor, this is a uh, referral to PTI with a plea. If I may approach. Yes. Thank you. Santian, would you raise your right hand, please? Do you swear the testimony you give in this matter will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Okay. You're being offered an opportunity to do this um, by entering a plea of no contest and being referred to pretrial intervention. And I assume they've explained to you that means that if you complete the requirements of the pretrial intervention program, then at the end of that period, which is typically one year, and this is six months, uh, uh, at the end of that six months, if you've complied with everything, the charge will be dismissed. Okay. I need you to understand, though, that you are pleading no contest today, so that if you don't comply with the requirements of pretrial intervention, when you come back, you will not come back and get a trial. You'll come back for a sentence. None of us want that to happen. We want you to succeed with this. Uh, but you need to be aware that you are giving up your right to a trial and your right to remain silent by entering this plea today. Correct? Okay. Very good. Court will accept Mr. Santian's plea. And it doesn't look like there's anything I need to sign there. Uh, when does he report to pretrial intervention? Uh, well, I was hoping to meet with them. Your Honor. Yes, sir. If, if we can have that, we will send him over. Is that the PTI? Yeah. It, it, uh, yes, sir. I'll be I'll be happy to hand it to you. <laughs> very good. Thank you. Thank you very much, Your Honor. This gentleman will take care of you. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Thank you. Marty Nopes, or is it Knopes? <coughs> okay. We'll come back to him. Uh, Ben, and it looks like it's it starts with Burt Moore. Your that's yeah, I Burt, Burt, Burt Moore. Yeah, okay, <laughs> your handwriting's worse than mine, and mine's pretty bad. I'm, I've been advised not to write my own pleas, Your Honor. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Tamika Tayson, T A S I N, Your Honor. 
She's present, Your Honor. We are here just for one cycle continuance, if we could, Your Honor. No objection. February 27th at 9 o'clock is your date to come back. Thank you, Thank sir. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Moore. Thank you, Your Honor. Michael Gilbert. Sir. In case Mr. Ronnie Fowler and 22 CF 2715 have a waiver on file, we're going to request a continuance to get some. It's a gun case. We need to get some information on the gun to the state. No objection. February 27th, then? Yes, sure. Very good. Okay. Thank you, Thank I'm sorry. You. Ryan Hardy. Good morning, Your Honor. My first client is Philip Merritt, 21 CF 3302, 21 CF 3294, and 22 CF 2724. Mr. Mayor is present. Your Honor, we're asking for a one cycle continuance. The state had no objection. objection. February 27th. Your Honor, I also have Joseph Persley, 22 CF 2212. I believe he's listed under Mr. Moore. Uh, and there's a waiver on file, and we just found our notice. If I could get a continuance on that as well. Objection. Also be February 27th. Thank you, Your Honor. That's all I have. Thank you, Mr. Hardy. Cheryl Gooden. Someone I know. Good morning, Your Honor. One time between visits. Yes, indeed. I am covering for Glenn Switek. If if you don't mind, I would like to take care of his cases first. Okay. The first one is Alexis Dale, D A L E, twenty two C F two five one nine. It's my understanding they've reached a PTI agreement. They're going to execute it and file it with the court. So um, the January 3rd date, I believe. That's what that works for me, January 3rd. Okay. Uh, he also has Luis Lopez on the docket. He filed a motion. I'm sorry, Luis Lopez, L-O-P-E-Z. Um, 22 CF 1418, he filed a motion to continue so that they could do depositions. That's without objection, Your Honor. February 27th. Edgar Nunez, N-U-N-E-Z, 21 CF 1005, he filed a motion for continuance so that they can do another round of depositions. That's correct, Your Honor, without objection. Also February 27th. The last one he had on the docket was Shelly Edwards, case E-D-W-A-R-D-S, 22 CF 1951 and Ms. Edwards appears to be here. <laughs> Hi Miss Edwards and 22 CF 1969. Um, he did a motion to continue so that they could uh, perfect de depositions. So that'll be continued to February 27th at 9 o'clock. And that's all he has on the docket. Okay. okay. Yep. And the ones that I have on the docket, Your Honor, are Benjamin McNutt, M-C-N-U-T-T, -T, 21 CF 2956. Uh, we, uh, the state and I have agreed to a misdemeanor plea. However, we're, uh, we're, we haven't perfected it yet, so I'm asking for a continuance. It'll be a plea to a misdemeanor, and it'll be a signed plea, and all I'll have to do is, no, that's is fine. file that's it with the court. Do you want to wait till the 27th, or do you want to bring it in January 3rd? I can, I can try and make sure. He lives in another state, so it, everything will be done by email. We'll leave it till the 27th, Your Honor, just okay. for status purposes. We can always take it off. February 27th. Thank you. Thank you. The next one I have is Jeremy Koser, K O I S E R 21 C F 2033. We originally were going to announce ready for trial, however, we have a new state attorney. Koser? Koser, K O I S E R 21 Miss Leon, do you want to pass it one cycle so you can get familiar with it? Um The defense is ready for trial. I understand. It's up. Your it's honor. A, so balls in your court. It's really up to you. Right. I'm not going to. Yeah. I'm, I'm not going to make the state <laughs> ask for a continuance. But if you want a continuance, I'll request one. I may not necessarily need a continuance. Just the chance to look. And why, why don't we set it for January third? Okay. Yes, Your Honor. That would be fine. Set it, yeah. Set it for the docket day, January third. You can make a decision then. And the last one I have, and I'm not even going to try the first name, but the last name is Pal. It's 21 CF 1979, and if we can, leave it on for the third. 
Uh, Perhaps you can pronounce your client's first name by then. They behave. V a i b h a v. Yeah, okay. Pal. P a l. Yeah, gotcha. <laughs> We can talk before then, that's good. <laughs> so um, if we could leave it on the 3rd. January 3rd, sure. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. And that's all I have, nice and it's you, very good. good to see you. Robert Allen. Somebody else I know. <laughs> good to see you. And I'm going to spell this last name out, Neroskaya, N-E-R-O-N-S-K-A-I. And that's 21 CF 2817, and she's present. Talk to the state attorney, and we're going to... Bring this back January the 3rd at 9 o'clock. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Now, I've got a couple of lawyers uh, who are out of town and asked to attend by phone. We're going to call them. Uh, this will be, first one will be, uh, oh, is Andy McGraw here? No. Andy McGraw is the prosecutor on that one. Let me leave that and see if he shows up. Uh, the other one is, the attorney's name is Thomas Sider, State versus Alvarado. It's 19 CF 002316. And we're going to find out if I, how do I make a, it's a long distance call. Okay. I'm sorry, that was not a valid choice. No, it isn't. Okay. Press one. If Let's try again. Law, this is Mayor, how can I help you? Hi, this is Judge Nickinson calling from Crestview. I need to speak with Mr. Sider. Okay. Hold on one second. Thank you. Hi, Mr. Sider. This is Judge Nickinson calling from Crestview. We're here for yes, a pretrial conference on State versus Alvarado. Oh, okay. Very good. Thank you for calling me, sir. Appreciate it. Yes, sir. What What do you need to do? Oh, I just wanted to see the status of the uh, the case. I think there's been a change in the ASAs on it, and I'm not sure if it's set for trial or just wanted to update my client on what's going on. Uh, that, that would be a good idea. <laughs> What do we know? Are you asking me, Judge? I'm sorry. Oh, sorry, I'm asking the state attorney. Oh, very good. Uh, Your Honor, um, I didn't understand if he said he's ready for trial or not. He doesn't sound like he knows. He's expecting you to tell him where the case stands. Uh, well, I'm not able to do that right now, and I'm, I want to ask. Mr. Sider, is your client ready for trial? Um, I haven't spoken with her recently, Judge. Let's continue um, this. To the, the, let's continue this to the next docket day, which is or pretrial conference, which is February twenty seventh at nine o'clock. Uh, Your, Your Honor, may I ask to for the case to be set for docket day on January third? January third. Okay. Yes. Mr. Sider, we're going to reset it for January third at nine o'clock. That's a docket okay. day that typically okay. would be used uh, immediately pretrial, but I. I doubt the state is going to announce ready for trial on January 3rd. Okay, no worries, sir. And is the defense uh, counsel there as well, or? I, is, there any, in, is there, I thought you were defense counsel. No, sir, I'm, I'm the victim counsel. Ah, okay. 
Who's the? Sorry. Uh, who is the? I, I, I beg your pardon. I. Uh, oh, no I, worries, I did Alfred. not understand that. Okay, that I did not match up the case. I thought you were defense counsel. That case has already been continued to uh, February 27th. Okay, thank you. As, okay. as it turns out, we'd already called that one. I didn't connect it with you because I've got 355 cases on the docket. <laughs> <laughs> Understandable, <laughs> Understandable, sir. Understandable. <laughs> All, right. All right, very thank good. Thank you, Mr. Sider. Your next hearing is yes. February 27th. Thank you, sir. Thank Take you. Care. Okay. All right. Um, who's next? I, I've run out of attorneys' names. Now, Mr. Nopes. Yeah. No, Mr. Nopes. Yeah, sorry. I'm sorry, Judge. That was outside. That's quite all right. I, I should have remembered that I'd skipped you. I'm actually covering for Jeremy Keach, and he's to start with. Judge has got Mark Dandridge, and he's asked to continue it. I don't believe there's any objection. No objection. Your Honor. So that's uh, February 27th. Yes, sir. And then Sebastian Durham, 22 CF 1287. He's also asking to continue it. No objection. February 27th at 9 o'clock. Dusty Jernigan, he's asking to leave it set for docket day. All right, that's January 3rd. Donovan Smith, he's asking to continue it. No objection, February 27th. And Grady Sutton, he's also asking to continue it. No objection. No objection, February 27th at 9 o'clock. Judge, I have um, Chad Blotta, and I'm asking to continue it. I don't believe there's an objection. objection. February 27th. And then uh, Mindy Collins, I'd ask to continue it. Oh, yes, sir. Uh, uh, no objection. No, February 27th. Um, Andre Copeland. Uh, Ms. Berkman, I'm still waiting on the final report from the doctor. Wait on me, okay. Yes, sir. So we're asking to continue it February 27th. Thanks. It's a security thing. Yeah. February 27th? February 27th, yes. Okay. Wait on me real quick. Then I've got Justin Diaz. Is he in custody? Judge, I'm, I'm going to ask to continue it. Um, okay. Objection. February 27th. Um, I then have Willie Durham. Durham's here. I'm going to ask to continue it also. No objection. Durham, good morning, sir. Your case is being continued to February 27th at 9 o'clock. Thank you, sir. Judge, I have then Benjamin Hoffman, and I'm asking to... Well, I'm going to ask to continue it, um, but I'm going to attempt to talk to the state, too. Okay. I have no objection to that, but as a withhold probation offer, so if we can't get resolved by next cycle, let's get that to close, please. Understand. Yeah. Understand. Yeah. Okay. Very good. February 27th. Um, Aaron Jefferson, if I could put it on the 27th of February also. February 27th. Judge Ryan Miller. Jefferson's present. Come see me. Come, come, see, me. come see me. Uh, Ryan Miller. Because I was just appointed on Mr. Miller, so I'm going to ask for a continuance. No objection. Call my office and come see me. February 27th at 9 o'clock. Mr. Miller, thank you. Tasha and Morris has agreed to continuance. No objection. February 27th. Um, Jared Riley, Judge, agreed to continuance. Without objection. Looks like Mr. Riley is here. 
Riley, your case is being continued to the February 27th date at 9 o'clock. Yes, sir. It's an appointment comes in. Probably a lot like today. Um, Brandon Scarborough, Judge, I've asked the state if I could continue it one more, one more time, and they've agreed. One last time, Your Honor. Okay. It'll be February 27th. Expect to go on the March 13th trial uh, setting if it doesn't uh, resolve by then. Good, but, hey, wait on me. Actually, wait on me. Okay. okay. And then the last one is Joseph Tolles. Judge, that's a fairly new case, and the state's agreed to allow me to continue it. Tolles is also here. Mr. Tolles, we'll need you back on February 27th at 9 o'clock. Right, yes, Thank you. We must all have got Judge Mr. Have a day. Happy New Year. Same to you. Oh, okay. Good morning, Your Honor. David Rare here for the Pella Firm. Judge, the first I have is Mr. Joshua Hovermill. He's 22 CF 2176. Uh, we're going to be scheduling deposition in this case, asking to move him out to February 27th pretrial. February 27th. Next, Your Honor, I have is Mr. Robert Needner. Um, in this case, Judge, we're still waiting on some information from the state from a prior motion to compel. We're asking to move him out to 227 for pretrial. Objection, and last to have on the docket judge is Christopher Whitaker. He's 20 CF 2312 and 20 CF 1935. Um, we had tried to set this case or both these cases for trial previously. There's always been some kind of issue that bumps them. Um, the only potential trial week I and co-counsel are available this coming trial cycle is the week of the 17th. It's also a four day, not a five day trial week. Right. And I don't know as with uh, Ms. Basso. So I was going to say leave it set with uh, expectation that would be the only trial week we could do. You want to talk before Monday and see if, or before the third and see if we can pull that off or not? Just leave it for the third. We can set it without if you think we can talk about it, or we can bump it to the next trial cycle for March. But I didn't have a chance to talk to you this morning about it. And I'm fine with bumping to the next one if it's if the four day week's concerned. I'm okay. With okay. That. <laughs> If there's no objection from the state, I'd ask for the next pretrial with a March trial. The next pretrial is February 27th. Okay. Hope, hope maybe you can get it tried in March if you need to. Hopefully, Judge, and that's all I have. <laughs> okay. Um, flowers? <coughs> yeah, hold oh. Okay. Yeah. Let, let, I've got one other to call first. What's your name? All right. Got it. Okay. Need to call the case for Amber Lunn. That's the defendant. Uh, don't know whether she's public defender client. She's my client. Oh, Ms. Flowers. Good. Is she here? Yes. Yeah, okay. Here. Just out of curiosity, would it be good? If we've got we've only got nine inmates this morning. Would it be a good idea to go ahead and call them, get them out of here? If the deputies have them ready, Judge, state spot. Have you? Um, hey, Miss Lyon, step out, please. Well, I'm step right over here. Right here, right here, and face the judge, please. Thank you. Okay. Good morning. Yes, Your Honor. Um, this is Amber Michelle Lunn, um, Jennifer Flowers on her behalf for the record in 22 CF 2322. Um, does is the court um, have the competency, competency evaluation in front of it? I don't know. Hold on. Uh, what's the case number? It's uh, 22 CF 2322. Could I have a copy if you'd like me to? Right, thank you. That would be quicker. Given the link to the docket today. And. Your Honor, Ms. Uh, Lund was evaluated by Dr. Randy McDonald and right. has been, the report indicates um, that competency training will be required. Um, incompetent for, the report indicates she's incompetent to proceed to trial at this time, so 
I don't yes, have sir. an order with me, um, but I can have an order prepared by the end of the day. Um, if Your Honor would enter an order. And Your Honor, say we'll stipulate to that report. We are not seeking a second evaluation at this time. And Dr. McDonald has recommended that she be committed to the custody of the Department of Children and Families for competency at training. Yes, sir, Your Honor, that's fine. Um, okay. Yes, Your Honor, I'll have an order prepared. Yeah, I'll, I'll make a finding that she's not competent to stand trial, that she should be committed to the Department of Children and Families for residential competency restoration services. Um, need to set a review date. He's saying within six to 12 months. That would be a, a, probably a six month review. I think that would be appropriate. Okay. Um, how about. But May 25th. Sure. That's a miscellaneous criminal hearing. Is that yes, appropriate? Yes, sir. That would be perfect. Yeah. Awesome. Good. Good luck. Hope this does you some good. I'm going to go ahead and call the rest of the in custody people so that we can. Yeah. Matthew Sims. Who's Sims? I have no idea. Did we? Okay. Didn't realize we had. Madison Beatty or Beatty? If we've done any of the others on that list, I, I, they're just going to have to tell me because I don't know. EEA. Is he here? Oh, is that Brad Stewart's case? Okay. Let's check and be sure. Get you dressed up and come downtown, not, not be able to. Oh, okay. You're going to be back here day after tomorrow. Okay. Excellent. Thank you. Kashira Jackson. This is Mr. Flowers' case, and he continued the case to April 24th, previously. Okay. This yes, sir. Mr. Jackson, I, your case has been continued to April 24th. Your lawyer will be out to talk with you about that. Okay. Thank you. Kristen Parker. Did we dealt with that one? Okay. Mm -hmm. And I think we dealt with Randy Perez, didn't we? Yes, sir. I believe we did. Oh, Mark. I apologize, Your Honor. Oh, okay. Fair yeah. enough. This is Mr. Perez. Okay. Okay. Um, Your Honor, Jennifer Flowers on behalf of Randy Perez. Um, Your Honor, could we um, set him actually um, for what's the next miscellaneous date? Um, Not the 29th, but the 5th. I've got January 5th. Okay, can we set him on that date? I intend to file a uh, motion for bond. So we can Very go ahead. Good. January 5th for a bond hearing. Yep. Very good. That's it? Thank yeah. You. yeah, that's all for today, Mr. Paris. Yes. <coughs> Jason Blocker. We're Casey Etheridge for Jason Blocker, Your Honor. We'd like to set this for docket day, January 3rd. January 3rd, 9 a.m. Is that with subpoenas or without? Uh, without. Thank you. There will be a plea or continuance January 3rd. Thank you. Broderick Weathersby.
Your Honor, Tim Gibbs on behalf of Broderick Weathersby, 22 CF 2782. Your Honor, this case was supposed to have been transferred back down to the South End in Division 1 or 2. Um, he had another case up here that had been transferred to misdemeanor, so this felony case needs to be transferred back down to the South End. I believe the state had filed a motion to do that, and the last the last minute sheet we have from December 1st reflected that. Um, Does he already have a date in his other cases there? I don't think it's been transferred yet, Judge. I don't know okay. if it's been officially we transferred. Know their dates? There was a plea day for January 9th, I believe, for his uh, for the division he was going to. Well, let's set him for January 9th in the South End and try to get that was maybe as quick as we can get you there. Sorry. Appreciate it. Ethan Connect. Morning, Your Honor. Judge, he's got a companion's case that's set for January 26. Um, I'm going to go ahead and move. That's to today. January. Oh, no, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. 26. This is this is still December. It's still December. Yes. I'm sorry. I've been new to. Yeah, okay. It's, would be today's the 27th anyway. So he's got something else set for January 26. You want to that's set correct, these together? That's correct, Judge. He's got another case um, at 1:30. Okay. Uh, judge, I'd like to pass this <coughs> with that. I'll be meeting with the. Um, Prosecutor, if we can get both of them resolved and get him in earlier, then we'll do that. Good. Thank you, Mr. Williams. We'll set this case for January 26th as well. Christmas candy that my mom made. Buckeyes, turtles, and crumb candy. Oh, okay. Did you do your continuance? That's fair. Okay, perfect. Okay, good. Okay. Okay. Judge, he's telling me that he wants to go ahead and accept uh, the state's plea offer today. Um, it is for 18 months community control, followed by three years probation. Let's do this. Take him in the <coughs> back, and I'll I'll go in the room and talk with him. Okay. Let's do it that way. Very good. Thank you, Judge. In the meantime, I have been asked to announce a group of continuances to uh, February 27th. Um, so listen up if your name is called. Actually, if, if, okay. in here yeah good morning those of you who've just just joined us and I know you've, you have, you've been here all along I'm about to announce a list of, of, of people whose cases have been continued to February 27th. So if I call your name, wait to leave. But if I call your name, you can leave today and you're due back on February 27th. I'm going to ask if you're standing back here or if you're seated here, wait until I've finished calling the names so that we don't have people miss their name being called by commotion going on in the courtroom while I'm still calling names. Charles is at Owens. Jackie Passmore. Michael Patterson. Dustin Reeves. Tabitha Rents. Devin Robbins. Miguel Robles. Angela Rushing. Charles Singletary. Julia Sledge. Kenneth Stewart. Andrew Stokes. Ralph Thompson. Zeb Tidwell, Lisa Walker, 
uh, looks like Elijah Westbrooks. And is it Joshua Willis? The last name is Willis. Looks like Joshua or Joshua. It should be Joshua Willis, Your Honor. Okay. Thank you. Eddie Wilson. And then there's somebody, Welton, C.J.? Welton? Well, Walton County. Mr. Wilson is in the Walton County Jail, okay. Your Honor. That's, that was just uh, Now, I've got Tim Gibbs. That's a name that's up. Is that you? That's, that, this that's is my your list, list, Your Honor. Yes, right. thank you. You're not excused, then. <laughs> Uh, Stephen Arp, Christina Beeman, Connie Brown Menzies, uh, Jeremy Brundage, Gregory Carroll, Timothy Carter, Christopher Chase, Ronald Collins, Candy Corsi, Nathan Craig, John Davis, Dallas T Dodd, Kelly Ellis, Crystal Gifford, and Ms. Etheridge gets the hand penmanship award today. Uh, Larry Miller and Laura Rooks. If you are among those people, you are free to go. You come back on February 27th. We'll wait a minute and let those folks get themselves out of here. So you want to have made an appointment with the public defender to cover the base, call the office and make an appointment. Can somebody from the state attorney's office call and see about Andy McGraw? Andy McGraw is, a, you, you probably won't know him if you're new. Andy McGraw is a prosecutor from Pensacola. He's got one case here. I've got an attorney in looks like the Tampa area waiting for a call on that case. And I haven't seen Andy. No, sir, I haven't seen him either. So if, hadn't if somebody could check maybe with his office and you get it, I mean, I don't care who calls him. Thank you. Okay. If you need to make an appointment with the public defender's office, please do so. But I need you to not do it here, please. Because I've still got 80 or 50, 150 or 200 people left to see. If you have business with your attorney, you need to do it outside the courtroom. Oh, yeah, I've been transferred here, so you will see me here mostly. Did we get all of Ms. Flowers' cases? I think so, Ms. Flowers. We got all of you. Get some more. Come on up. I've got Travis Anderson. Your Honor, Travis Dale Anderson is present, approaching in 22 CF 2410. Uh, Jennifer Flowers on his behalf. Um, Your Honor, we're asking, we thought we might bring him in for docket day, but I'm asking for a continuance to meet with Mr. Anderson. Uh, I don't believe there's an objection. February 27th at 9 o'clock is your day to come back. Thank you. Venetia Berry. Is it all right if I just call them? Yeah, I, I, okay. I, I have no idea who they are, so okay. I hope you will call them. <laughs> yes, Ms. Uh, Barry is here in 22 CF 2234. Um, Your Honor, we'd like to bring her back on docket day. Is it January 3rd? January 3rd? Yes. Very good. With subpoenas or without? Without. Okay. Thank you for a plea. Oh, January 3rd. Thank you. Thank you. Brianna Blaine. 22 CF 903. Um, Miss Blaine just needs to meet with probation. She's on the docket today because there was some confusion last time she entered a DPA, PTI. Anyway, Your Honor, I believe she, she's in a PTI agreement, um, but needs to meet with probation and exchange information. Okay. So if she'll just go Step meet over with there and do that. Yeah. It was filed. I'll talk to you guys when I'm done. Well, I'll go. You need to, you need to just give him another date, I think. Um, January 3rd? Probably long enough. What's that? 
Yeah, it may be. Um, let's. Let's give him a, a we've got a January 25th date. That's a miscellaneous date. What is his name? James Simmons. Is it, there's was James Simmons that was here and announced that he had COVID. I've reset him for January. I'm not sure whose case it is. Oh, it's Ms. Flowers' case? Okay. That's all right. That's all right. James Simmons is your client? Yes. Apparently he has COVID. Uh, yes. He, he, he came. I've reset him for January 25th. Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate that. Um, Gabrielle Christmas? Yes. Okay. Um, Your Honor, I haven't had a chance to meet with Ms. Christmas. So this is a failure to comply with a pretrial diversion. Um, so okay. if we could just pass her briefly, I can recall her so that okay. I, I just haven't met with her yet. So All right, good. I just have a seat. Yeah, I need to talk to you. Uh, Leanna Delange. This is 22 CF 2215. She is present. Um, we're going to set her for docket day without subpoenas January for a resolution. 3rd without subpoenas. Yeah. Clear continuance then on January 3rd. Yes. Nicholas Ducati. Okay, likewise, I had not gotten to talk with Mr. Ducati yet, so um, if we could just pass him for now, and I can recall him. The, the offer is an adjudication credit for time served. Adjudication? Credit for time served. What's happening? All right, we'll just pass him okay. if we can. Have here, a seat. Just have a seat. Yeah, I need to talk to you. Um, Matthew Hartley. Matthew Hartley. I've had no contact, Your Honor. Uh, what's the case number? 22 CF 1141. Hmm? Is there a waiver? Oh, no. I will ask for a KPS, Your Honor. Is here and on a motion to reinstate his bond November 7th. Um, let's, uh, it, what kind of bond has he got? He, he's out, uh, he, he had a bond and then, or he, he didn't have a bond and then was given a bond. He's, I think he's out on ROR right now. Um, I haven't, oh. I'm not sure. I don't, okay. I don't think he's here. If I may, Your Honor, uh, based on the notes that I have on the file, uh, Mr. Hartley failed to appear on June 27, 22, and uh, an arrest uh, warrant was issued. He was arrested, then uh, he filed for a bond motion. It was granted, and the state withdrew, uh, I mean, I guess the failure to appear warrant was withdrawn. That is the reason why I asked for a KPS at this time. That's it. And just, he, it was actually, he was given a bond again because the failure to appear, he, we, we uh, showed proof that he was actually incarcerated at the time. Yeah. So it wasn't, so, well, just he, so you know he, the he background. He may be again, but uh, yeah. uh, you never know. But it was an OR bond that he went up with? Or he was, his bond was reinstated, I think. Well, that's uh, what it says, bond reinstated, okay. but I can't tell what the bond was. It was a it's a signature bond. Okay, so I don't have a surety. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we need a we need a KPS no bond until he appears. In Thank, you, Your Honor. Thank you, Thank you. That's what I was was looking for. If I'd had a bondsman, I would have notified bondsman. Thank you. Um, Anthony Hortes. Uh, Thank you. And Your Honor, um, 
This case, uh, we're um, going to be setting this case for trial. Uh, however, um, I'm not going to be available, so we could ask for a continuance and set it for trial next cycle. Need to be continued to January 20, uh, February 27th. And is uh, can we hard set it? For that cycle? Yes. I would, I would well, I, I, I'll, I'll set him for February 27th with the notation that Thank there will be no more continuances unless there is some exigency that requires it. Thank but you, there, there should Thank be you, no Honor. more continuances. That works. Thank you. So you come back 20, this February 27th. Okay. Thank you, Your Honor. Pamela Kelly. Yeah. Ms. Kelly is approaching in 22 CF 477. We're in ongoing um, um, talks with the state, and um, I think we'll be setting depositions this cycle. I don't think there's an objection to a continuance. That's correct, Your Honor. February 27th at 9 o'clock is your time to come back. We did Amber Lunn. Justin Maddox. 22 CF 1754 and 22 CF 1843. Uh, Your Honor, we're asking for a continuance. I don't believe there's an objection. No objection. Very good. I'm sorry. February 27th? Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. I was looking at something else momentarily. Did Randy Perez. Gloria Pettit. 22 CF 1201. Um, this is when we're also asking for a continuance. I don't believe there's an objection. No, no objection. February okay. 27th, then at uh, 9 o'clock. Um, Mr. Simmons was continued to the 27th. Um, Betty Westbrook. Mm -hmm. And, Your Honor, we're going to have to pass Ms. Westbrooks because, likewise, I haven't had a chance to meet with her. Um, she, I think, she, I'm in, I'm hoping she's going to accept a PTI today, but I've got to, I've got to meet with her. Senior lawyer, though. Yes. Why, why haven't you? I tried to, and then I don't have a phone, so and my mom's sick, and the only way that I've been able to use the phone is my mom. You've got to get this case on the rails, so you need to find a way, even if you go down, go down to the office and wait until it go down there and they'll give you an appointment. Hard to do that when I don't have, you know. Transportation or gas money. Or um, so, Your Honor, I've got a few that I'll recall, but yeah. I think that's all I have Very for good. right now. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, are we are we down to are we down to uh, public vendor clients? I believe there's a few no attorneys. I don't know if the, if the court would like to call those or. Sure. Uh, Just as a how do, how do I know who they are? Um, I, can I think we have uh, Brandon Burdett. Should we be on this? Burdett, you are representing yourself? Uh, as of right now, I'm. Um, with uh, Judge Ketchell is my actual judge. No, Judge Ketchell is not your actual judge anymore. Oh, he's not. No, so we don't know. We don't know who your actual judge will be uh, because they haven't been appointed by the governor yet. Okay. But uh, well, Judge that's what Ketchell I was has changed assignments. I'm in. I'm sitting in Judge Ketchell's seat today. Okay. So I'm not for sure who who my judge it is. It doesn't make any difference who your judge is. You need a lawyer, don't you? Right. I need an attorney. Do you need um, appointed? Do you I, I filed. I filed. For an attorney, they yeah. said that uh, for some reason I make too much. I'm which sorry, uh, do, you, do you have your case number for me? Oh, you may. Yes, sir. I, they, and the reason I have to ask, they, they sort the cases by case that number on Smart Bench here. It's 2022 it's, CF 2160. Yeah, it's actually changed a few times on me. So. 2160? Yes, Your Honor. Well, the case number hasn't changed, likely. What do you have? 22 CF 2160. 2160, yes, sir. Yeah. yeah. 22. Your Honor? Yes. May I state something? Uh, 
I just wanted to let the uh, Mr. Berdat know. I'm not sure if he's aware of the plea offer in the case or not. Well, I don't know either, but I, I think I need to address his attorney status before I start talking. About, Definitely. About I was just going to suggest in any event to set it for docket day, January 3rd, for at least status. Uh, I've, I've, I've seen the plea agreement, the original one from months back. I'm not, I'm not going to accept that. Um, Hang on just a minute. This, okay. i got to do this in order. Oh, okay. First thing I need to address is, is whether you have counsel. Um, do you remember when you applied for counsel? Let's see here. I, I'm sorry. I've got it. I, I have it. You, you have it? You don't need to, you don't need to find it. I've okay. got it. Okay. Yes, sir, you, you don't qualify, given your, even with three dependents, you don't qualify for appointed counsel. Um, so, uh, well, the, 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 the sheet that they give you to fill out doesn't really necessarily explain my finances very well. Um, income of $7,000 a month. It, I didn't. It's not seven thousand. You three, said it was. Three you said it. You said it was thirty-five hundred dollars semi-monthly. That's that's. It, well, that's twice third, a week. That's, that's that, twice a month. that was for that particular month. I own my own small business, so, and she, she told me to write down how much income I made for that uh, month. Well, thirty-five hundred for that month. Was that an unusual month? And uh, what? Yes, sir. The months vary. What was your What was your income? I know we're at the so, end of the year. When you filed your income taxes last year. Last year, right? What was your annual income? Last year it was a, around uh, thirteen to fifteen thousand dollars. After all said and done, yes. Well, sir. What, do you, what do you mean when all said and done? I mean, uh, you know, after um, the taxable income. Taxable income, right? Your was, actual income was less than fifteen thousand dollars. Yes, sir. I mean, last year was a, a terribly slow year. I had to get okay. loans and. How about this year? Uh, this year, I'm doing a little better, but I'm still better? paying off loans and, and uh, getting yeah, things straight. Paying out, off so. loans doesn't well. Paying off if they're business loans. Yes, sir. Can you give me an idea of what your taxable income is likely to be? I'm, I'm just looking for ballpark. A taxable income for this year or for up to date? Yeah, yeah. For well, I mean, there's only three days left in the year. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm sorry. Um, uh, I'd have to go. I'd have to look I, at I'm it not, all. I'm not. To I'm not. I need some idea. If it was, if I would guess. Enough, I would guesstimate it's going to be around anywhere from. Um, Twenty to twenty-six thousand, something like that. Public defender is appointed. You want an appointed lawyer? I, we're going to need a new affidavit. Right. From so, I, I, what, what I was going to do today was to ask for a continuance, and then whenever I file my taxes, I'll have that no, proof no, it, it, of no, income. No, we, we need to get the case. The, the case has been. We need to get the case moving. Do you want me to appoint a lawyer to represent you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I need Public an attorney. Yes, sir. Public defender is appointed. Next court date, Judge, is going to be That'll be a provisional appointment. Okay. But we'll set him for the next court date, which is February 27th. That's DUI. Thank you, Judge. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. But again, we do need a, a new affidavit from him because okay. yes, with, yeah. with what he filed, I mean, he basically said he had seven thousand dollars a month income. That's and your, the next one is uh, Philip Merritt. Merritt Horton was it? Oh, did they call it earlier? <coughs> Was his case already handled or no? 
Okay. This is attorney. No attorney. No attorney. Oh, he has run hard. Oh, but not on this one. I don't have any attorney listed unless he filed recently on this one. It's um, 22 CF 2724. Not on this case. Judge, the defendant was in here on December 1st. Um, he was to have an uh, attorney appointed by 1227 or hired. Looks like he's got Ryan Hardy, who's private counsel, on his other two yeah, cases. When did we set him for the other cases? We did. We set him for um, February 27th. Okay. So um, we can continue this one and, and track them all together, or we can. Yeah, I, why don't we just put this case on the 27th and one of you talk to Mr. Hardy between now and then and see if he's going to. If he's not, then we need to get the man back in to see right. if he needs appointed okay. counsel. And I believe the last one is a Tamika Tazin or Tazin. Are we done? Okay, perfect. Okay, good. All right. She's, She's taken care of. Yep. Okay. All right. Then I think we're down to PD cases. Yes, Your Honor. Oh, do you need to rock? Oh. Yeah, sure. Tony. Good morning, Aaron. Good morning. Who do you have? Aaron, I have three matters before the court this morning. The first is 2021 CF 2701, Jeremy Scott Disc Dixon. Aaron, that matter is we have a deposition scheduled for that on, I think, February the 17th. So we'll be asking for the court's continuance on that because the discovery is still outstanding. That'll put you down for February 27th at 9 o'clock. That's fine, Judge. And the next, I have 20, uh, 22 CF, uh, 2275, uh, Jaquis Raphael Holiday Dorch. And he has a, uh, an agreement that has been submitted to the court. And I guess we need that for, uh, we could have it for a control date, but he has a uh, deferred prosecution agreement. We can set it, um, Mr. Dunn. I don't know what you want to. His, his requirements were very limited, Your Honor, so uh, he should be able to uh, make them within uh, the February 27th date. So okay. if, if you want to just very good. Uh, hold it off until then and make sure he's met his requirements, I think it, he should be able to do that. Okay. They were okay. February, Just set it for call on February 27th. And the last is Brian David Pate, 20, uh, 21 CF uh, 108. We have, we're trying to set the deposition of a current uh, client of the Public Defender's Office. Uh, we've had we've gotten a little conflicts on that. I think he may have had that re matter resolved. I've talked to the Public Defender's Office today, so we may be able to set that deposition soon. So we're going to ask for a continuance on that one, too, as well, Judge. Also for February 27th? Yes, and I would want to state on the record, it seems like this case is a little bit older. It would have to be the last continuance. My, my concern with that being, Your Honor, uh, not only has Ms. Mr. Pate been prosecuted by at least, I want to say at least five uh, state attorneys in this particular case, this matter is one that uh, the, uh, one of the key witnesses was also facing a situation that we were trying to coordinate with the Public Defender's Office. Uh, we had an agreement and we didn't have an agreement, so to say one last date really undermines all the work that's been put in this particular case. When's it going to come in for a landing? I, if, if the state's ready for trial. I don't think the state's I don't mean ready today, for trial. In but this I mean, case. if the state's ready for trial in March. That is correct, Your Honor. And if it, the state is not ready by then, then he can file the appropriate motion and we will respond. I'm going to put it down to February 27th. There should be no, uh, there's going to need, put it this way, there's going to need to be a really good reason Understand. for continuance beyond Understand. that trial cycle. Thank you, Your Honor. That's all I have. Thanks, Judge. Okay, give it to Tony. Al? Al? Morning, Your Honor. Good morning. How are you, sir? Good. Glad to see you visiting with us. Nice to see you. I'm happy to be here. Thank you, sir. Uh, Dixie Dan Powell on behalf of Christopher Kearns and talk to the state, Your Honor, there's been a request to drop charge statement filed and there's also, uh, she's filed one with the state attorney, so 
if we could uh, postpone this to see for the state to have an opportunity to review everything. No objection. Very good. What date do you want? Do you want February 27th or do you want something sooner? February 27 will be fine for the state. And if we need to February resolve this sooner, we can do that. Yes, sir. We, we should resolve it soon, Judge. And uh, I have a motion to modify no contact, so I'll let the state review that, and we'll try to probably have an agreed order on that. Thank you, Honor. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Um, Thank you. Just one second, Your Honor. For the motion, have you filed the motion for modification yeah, of way, bond? Way back, yeah. Would you like to set it for a hearing in case we don't get to agree, and then if we do agree, we submit the order? I think you, once you look at the motion, you'll probably agree. So we'll send you. That's fine, Your Honor. Okay. Very Thank good. You, Jack. Thank you. Hey, Kenny, Merry Christmas, buddy. You too. Okay. Connect. Yeah. Ethan, connect. Judge, I suppose to Mr. Connect, um, what I'm going to do, it looks like he's actually got this case, we got a notice to appear for 1-5, I'm not sure what that date is for, but it does have this case number on it. The other case is not coming up until later. What I'd like to do is go ahead and leave it on for 1-5. Uh, I'll talk to the prosecutor, see if we can get it worked out, or at least get a bond hearing filed, or maybe an agreement. Uh, he had a failure to appear on the other case getting out today anyway. He's not getting right, out today we'll, anyway. We'll set them both in for January 5th, see if you can get, get things resolved. Thank you, Judge. I appreciate it. All right. We'll have you in towards the end of next week. Would you like me to call the cases, Your Honor, or did you have someone? Okay. No, go ahead. All right. Um, Cynthia Allen. She's here. Her caretaker was here earlier, Your Honor. Um, and so if we could just pass her, um, he's going to try to get her in here. She is deaf. Um, so, but he's going to try to get her in here. So if I'd like to pass this for a few moments. Okay. Um, Eric Allen. Casey Etheridge for Eric Allen. And, Your Honor, this was a, um, we were appointed on this case, um, and Mr. Allen is um, over income from what I can see. And so we would ask the, the court to look at the record and consider the what the, number. it is a 22 CF 2619. No? Somehow I got a note of that. He's not over income? Okay. Two six one nine. Two six one. Sorry, I apologize. May have been a hearing aid issue for me. Yeah, they're gonna want you on the side. have the charts with me, but a showing $700 a week? Yes, I believe so. We just received a letter, Your Honor, saying he was over income, so My, we have to deal with that. Um, boy, I don't know. Um, Madam Clerk, do you show him? No dependents, no Somebody here have the, 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 there was supposed to be a chart. I haven't I seen it in have years. That. I know. Um, we don't have one. Uh, I'm going to find that he is, yeah. I'm going to find that he is indigent and appoints public defender. Okay. Thank you. That's fine, Your Honor. Okay. Uh, so then, um, 
This is the first time of, and we'd um, be asking for a continuance to the February docket. February 27th at 9 o'clock. Thank you. <coughs> Wait a minute, okay. Yeah, the public defender's office here in Crestview. Okay. okay. Um, Miranda Valentine. Casey Etheridge for Miss Valentine. And Your Honor, we'd like to set this, uh, leave this set on the docket and set it for docket date January 3rd. January 3rd? Yep. With or without subpoenas? Um, without. So it'll be a plea or continuance on yes, Your Honor. January 3rd. Um, Amanda Booker. Casey Etheridge for Ms. Booker. And Your Honor, we'd like to leave this set for docket day January 3rd um, without subpoenas. Very good. Ms. Booker, your case is set for January 3rd. That'll be a, either a plea or continuance. It will not be a, set for trial the week after. Uh, Jeffrey Brown. I don't see him um, here in court today. If we could just pass him to the end, we'll see if I can yeah, get him in here. Take a look at the end. Okay. Um, Hassan, I'm probably going to mess this up. Uh, Chabob? Shabu. Shabu. I always mess it up. Mm -hmm. um, Mr. Shabu would like to um, enter a no contest plea and accept the state's offer of the pretrial um, pre intervention program. May I approach? Mr. Shabub, raise your right hand, please. Do you swear the testimony you give in this matter will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, sir. Okay. I'm looking at a plea agreement which appears to have your signature on it. Did you sign it? Absolutely. Did you read it before you signed it? Yes, have you gone over it with uh, Ms. Etheridge? Absolutely. Satisfied with the advice you've received from your lawyer? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, by the terms of this agreement, you're to enter into the pretrial diversion program, and there's there is a score sheet with a total of four points. No objection, Your Honor. Um, you understand that the way pretrial diversion works is that um, if you successfully complete <coughs> the requirements of pretrial diversion, that at the end of that time the charges will be dismissed and you will essentially be without a criminal record. You also understand, though, that if you don't successfully complete the pretrial diversion requirements, you'll be coming back for a sentencing hearing. You're, you're, essentially what you're doing today is giving up your right to have a trial. Okay. Very good. Uh, court accepts Mr. Shaboob's plea. Enter into the pretrial diversion program. Terms include a substance abuse evaluation, any Recommended treatment, random breath and urine testing at your expense. Abstain from use of alcohol or controlled substances unless you have a valid prescription. Uh, pay $150 cost of prosecution, $150 court-appointed counsel fees, $515 in court costs to $100 FDLE fee. Pay any other fines, fees, or costs assessed by the court. I'm not assessing any others. And complete 15 hours of community service work. They'll talk to you over here. Now, what I failed to do on the other pretrial diversion that I took today was set a call date. In Cambia County, I would be setting a, a return date on this. Is that what you generally do here? Well, I don't think they usually do that here, Your Honor. Okay. If you don't, I, I won't do it. That's fine. Your Honor, I, if he fails to comply, we will send something back to the Okay, court that's fine. And ask that he I, 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 I just I realized after I did the other one that went. It's local customs. Yes. yes. Okay, thank you. All right. Did you need this? Uh, no, you're right. We have it. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you. Yep. Good luck, Mr. Shabu. Thank you. All right. Um, Shane Collier. And your, um, I filed a waiver of his appearance. I don't think they're here. Okay. okay. Um, we'd be asking to set this for a January 3rd. January 3rd for Mr. Collier. Thank you. Okay. And then we have um, Anthony Delahose. I'm probably butchering it. 
Okay, he's uh, approaching. Um, we'll be asking to set this for docket day January 3rd um, without subpoenas. Very good. Plea or continuance on January 3rd. It's at, it's at nine, correct, Your Honor? At nine, I assume so. Um, yes, I believe so. I, I, I don't have times on it. Yeah, I believe it's at nine, yes. And at nine, should be at nine. We'll be here. All right. Um, at Cameron Doris, I don't believe they're here either because I waived their appearance. Oh, Mr. What? Cameron Doris here? No. Is that, not him. Is that you? No. Okay. No, 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 that's not him. Yeah. Okay. Um, Mr. Doris, um, We'd like to set this for January 3rd. We have a resolution, I believe, we're coming okay. to. So, okay. And then um, Horace Durden. Um, there was a waiver of appearance filed in this case. We actually have a bond hearing on the 29th in this case. Okay. Um, and so we just, um, for the clerks, um, would would you rather me just set it for the 29th and then set it for the 27th, or what's your preference? Okay, um, we'll go ahead and set this for the 27th, leaving the bond hearing on the 29th. Right. Very good. Okay. February 27th? Yes, yes. yes. Okay. I apologize. Yeah. And then um, Ricky um, Gallet. Um, Casey Etheridge for Mr. Gallet, and we'd like to set this for um, January 3rd um, for, for docket day. A plea or continue? Plea or continuance then, January 3rd. That's your date to come back, January 3rd at 9 o'clock. You'll either enter a plea of no contest that day or the case will be continued. Thank you. Okay. And then um, Ms. Allen is here that we passed, Your Honor. Cynthia okay. Allen. Mm -hmm. And, Your Honor, she is deaf, and I don't believe that we have an interpreter here now, but I just want to make sure the court has eyes on her because the, yeah. she had uh, failed to appear the last court date. And so, um, but I had asked because of the yeah. circumstances. Right. Um, and so we're just asking, um, we need to meet with her with an interpreter, so we're asking for a continuance. February 27th okay. then at 9 o'clock. Okay. I'll explain to you when you come back. Okay. okay. Did you get the date, sir? February 27th? Okay. Thank you. Thank you for bringing her. Um, and then I believe Jeffrey Brown is here. I believe he was waiting in the back. Her Casey Etheridge for Jeffrey Brown, um, and we just to set this for docket day, January third. Very good. Okay, um, and your honor, um, I don't have any further cases. Thank you, Ms. Etheridge. Your honor, I did hear back from Mr. McGraw. Yeah. Um, Your Honor, uh, I believe he provided a number to the court, but I do have it, and he was asking. Um, as oh, I'm sorry, he did. He was expecting me to call both of them. Yes, sir. Maybe I'd better do that before he gets any later. Oh, they're waiting, or he's at least waiting, so it's no issue. Yeah. Okay. Does now. the court need the case number? Uh, no, I've got it. Thank you. Uh, I may need some help merging the calls, though. I'm sure that I know how to do that. Okay, I, I think I've got it. Yeah, hi, Mr. McGraw. This is Judge Nickinson. I'm sorry. I didn't recognize that you were expecting to be called, too, so I was was looking for you here in Crestview. I appreciate it. Good hearing, Judge. Uh, hold on a moment. I need to I need to figure out how to put you on hold. Which, which is the hold button? Uh, I'll let him know you're trying to call, okay? Uh, yeah, hold on. Unless you want to try to click him in. I appreciate it, but I don't think I'm going to be any better at that than you. Okay, hang on a minute. Let me see if this is hold. If this is hold and I cut you off, I'll call you back. 
Yes, sir. It isn't hold. Okay. Now. <coughs> no, that didn't do it. Andy, do I have you? Yes, sir. Okay, but the, whatever I just hit wasn't hold. Good morning, Mr. Scott Davis. Hi, Mr. Davis. This is Judge Nickinson in Crestview. Morning, Your Sorry Honor. for the delay getting with you today. Um, I had a little misunderstanding <laughs> about whether Mr. McGraw was going to be here. Let me try Your to. Honor, I appreciate the court allowing me to appear by phone. It's a 12 hour round trip from Tampa. Yeah, I so understand. Hold on. Not me, a problem, sir. Thank I've got to see if I can get Andy McGraw back on the line so I have both of you. Hold on. <laughs> Andy, do I have you? Yes, sir. Okay, and I've got Scott Davis on the other line. Mr. Davis, are yes, you sir. there? Okay, good. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, excellent. Wow, it worked. I, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I, I'm dealing with unfamiliar equipment as well. Uh, we were here on case 10 CF 57, State versus John Forrest. Gentlemen, what do you have? Your Honor, since you're probably unfamiliar with the case, this is a case where Mr. Forrest was convicted, sentenced, and came back on the 3850 motion, so it's pending before the court again. Mm -hmm. We fairly recently had uh, a hearing on our motion to suppress and motion limine before Judge Ketchell, um, and we received rulings from the court on that in mid-December. I don't recall the exact date, but fairly recently. Um, it's our intention to file some additional motions, so we would ask for another status conference prior to setting this for trial. Um, so that whoever, I, I presume from everything I've read, the, the judge who's going to ultimately be appointed by the governor is, is going into this division so that he or she can um, hear the motions that we intend to file and make yeah. appropriate ruling. Really I, I have no problem with that. Yeah, I'm filling in here today. Um, yes, sir. Ms. McGraw, are you okay with that? I am. Well, let me tell you what dates I've got. Uh, it just depends on how quickly you want to do it. Um, I've got a February 27th date. My guess is we are not likely to have the new judge by then. Uh, I have an April 24th date. We should have the new judge in position by then. I, I'm asking your advice how about how you want to schedule it. Um, I, how did I... Out of town on the 24th, but I sure don't remember planning this trip. I made my wife put on my calendar. <laughs> if, I, if I may appear by phone, I, the 24th you, is you, absolutely not. You a probably can. The other thing I could, yeah, I've got a couple of other miscellaneous dates. If April 26th would do better for you? <laughs> I, I'm, uh, I'm, sorry, I'm, sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, April 6th. Oh, April 6th? Yeah. I'm supposed to be in trial those uh, week. Okay. Or, or March 30th. I'm just looking for dates when we're more likely to have the new I'm judge in place. Supposed to be out of town and to, <laughs> uh, uh, if, if judge, I certainly am not trying to slow down progress. Yes. Well, I'll say if if I can appear by telephone, this March the April 24th is fine. Okay. If I'm out of town. I'll just call in. All right. Very very good. I, I'm sure whoever's here will be happy to have you call in. I'll make it work, Judge. And does that work for you? I'll make it work. Okay. Mr. McGraw, April 24th work for you? Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'll make it work. Okay. Very good. Well, if not, you can, the two of you can call in here and get somebody to schedule you for a different date, probably. We'll keep control of it, though, with an April 24th date, 9 a.m. And Thank you so much, that's Robert. going to be another day like today, which is, uh, I mean, there would be several hundred cases on the docket. Right. So if yep. you, you, you may want to call and see about getting a date where you've got a little more time. 
All right. Sure. Thank you, gentlemen. Pleasure to talk with you. Thank you. Likewise, sir. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Happy New Year. Okay. Got that done. Thank you. All right. Ms. Flowers, you're back. I've got three more. Okay. Gibbs is going to let me quickly do that. Mr. Ducati, Nicholas Ducati is present and approaching and 22 CF 2522. Um, Mr. Ducati is prepared to withdraw his previously entered plea of not guilty and enter a plea of no contest as charged to possession of controlled substance, possession of paraphernalia, um, to the agreed upon sentence would be an adjudication of guilt and credit for time served and court costs. Should I approach with the plea? Mr. Ducati, raise your right hand, please. Do you swear the testimony you give in this matter will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Uh, I'm looking at a plea agreement which has your signature on it. Did you sign it? Did you read it before you signed sir. it? Yes, sir. Have you gone over it with Ms. Flowers? Yep. Satisfied with the advice that you've received? Yep. Has anybody promised you anything that's not in this written agreement to get you to enter this sir. plea? Anybody threaten you or pressure you in any way to enter this plea if you think you'd be better off going to trial? Very well, the court will accept Mr. Ducati's plea of no contest as charged. On these two counts, he'll be adjudged guilty. Um, $515 in court costs, $150 cost of prosecution. I'm sorry, $100 cost of prosecution, $150 in public defender fee and, or, and uh, application fee. After 180 days, it will be sent to collections if it hasn't been paid. And the sentence is time served. Thank you, Your Honor. And I have a oh, score sir, sheet. Need if your I may. fingerprints, I think. Pardon me. I have a score sheet too. If oh, I'm I may sorry. Say. Yes, I. I do need score sheet. I'm sure it's correct. It has 19.4 total points. Okay. Okay. Miss uh, Betty Westbrook. Your Honor, this is Ms. Westbrook in 22 CF 2672. Um, she's going to be entering into a plea agreement with PTI. Um, I have the plea. Should I approach with the plea and square sheet? Thank you. Thank you. Westbrook, raise your right hand, please. You swear the testimony you give in this matter will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Score sheet has four total points. Thank you, Ms. Westbrook, I'm looking at a plea agreement which appears to have your signature. Uh, did you sign this plea agreement? Have you gone over it with Ms. Flowers? Are you satisfied with the advice you've received from Ms. Flowers? Has anybody promised you anything different from what's in this uh, written agreement to get you to do this? Anybody threaten you or pressure you any way to do this if you think you'd be better off going to trial? Okay, I need you to answer out loud, please. When I, I can tell you're saying yes, but if we don't get anything on the recording, we don't get anything on the recording. Um, do you understand? And basically what you're doing here today is giving up your right to a trial in this case. Sir, I right? understand. Because uh, if you successfully complete PTI, the charge will be dismissed. But if you don't, you'll come back and have a sentencing here. Right? Okay. We all hope that you'll succeed. Um, conditions of PTI are restitution to enterprise rental. Uh, there's a, a longer name for that here, but it's written uh, in the amount of $760.24, 50 hours of community service work, $150 cost of prosecution, $150 appointed counsel fees. Uh, $415 in court costs and stay away from any enterprise room. Uh, locations, the cost of supervision is waived and they'll talk with you over there okay. about the uh, requirements. Does PTI have, you have the copy? Have of the, copy. Okay, we had it. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. Um, Gabrielle Christmas. This is 21 CF1764. Um, 
we're going to um, have to continue this for me to confirm. I think Ms. Christmas has finished everything, but I need to okay. confirm that. So continue to 2 27. 27th of February. Very good. Okay. Right. Yeah, let me get your number. 850 Okay, thank you. All right, thank and Ms. Blaine? Brianna Blaine. Oh, I told Bri Brianna Blaine. She's already seen you, Your Honor. I she had a child care issue. I told her she could go. We were going to uh, figure out the PTI issue, but when I talked to probation, they think it would be better just to reset her um, for the tw the twenty seventh. So we have all the paperwork in order. Very good. Okay. Twenty seventh. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you. That's mm -hmm. all I have. Thank, thank you. you. Um, okay. Was I? I didn't have that on my. Um, Um, it might have been one I was recently appointed on, perhaps. Robert? What's the last name of the defendant? Robert. If so, I would ask. Well, I don't know if he's here. Mr. Roberts? Oh, he's, oh, he's, he's here. here. Yes. That was my next question. Yes, sorry. Um, uh, like he's, did he, he show up on your docket? No, she was just. Yeah, it, so looks, it looks like you were appointed like last week. Okay. Um, well, I would ask for a continuance to yeah, meet with, and I'll get his contact information. Date to come back is February 27th at 9 a.m. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Good morning, Your Honor. Gibbs. Uh, first, Your Honor, I'd like to call Mr. Brian Parker. Mr. Parker is present approaching, Your Honor, 22 CF 529. Um, we're, we've got terms that we've worked out with the state on this, but we'd like to leave this for next week to, um, so he and I can discuss that resolution just January a little bit 3rd. further. So just come back next yeah, week. Very good. Yeah, that's without subpoenas, Judge. Stephen Renfro. Stephen Renfro. Your Honor, I'm not seeing a response from Mr. Renfro, 22 CF 1785. State would ask for a KPS, Your Honor. I'm showing he was released on the cash professional bond on July 8th, 2022 of this year. Um, well, I think what I'm more inclined to do, unless you think he's, if he's got a uh, professional bondsman, why don't we set it for January 3rd and notify bondsman? That's the bondsman a week. No objection to that, Your Honor. Time enough for a KPS after that. Okay. January 3rd. Yeah. We're showing a cash signature. Oops. Uh-oh. Yeah, if it's not a, if he doesn't have a professional bond, then we need to do a KPS no bond. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Did Mr. Roberts. Yeah. Next, Your Honor, I have Mr. Eric Russell. 22 CF 718, 22 CF 719. We oh. We have reached an agreement with the state, Your Honor, in these two cases. Um, essentially, the terms of his plea is that he's going to be given time served, uh, assess the court costs and cost of prosecution, defense fee in each case. In uh, 22 CF 718, there is a $468.47 restitution to Gerald Sanders, as well as a $134.97 cost of transportation to the sheriff's office. And in 22 CF, and 22 CF 719, um, there's a $136.25 restitution to First Baptist Church of Milligan, if I may approach. Score sheet. Let me be sure that I understand. Score sheet has 99.7 points, but this is a yes, post sentence issue. This would be um, a downward departure. This defendant was in another institution when this warrant was executed. So he's been sitting, okay. getting credit, the state stipulating mm -hmm. to that credit. Essentially. So essentially, for the plea, I think that we still need to check the box that it's a legitimate right. plea. Yes, thank, thank you. you. He had, he had sent the allegated, the allegations, uh, the date was May 7th of 2017. He was arrested five days later on unrelated charges and had been incarcerated until uh, November of this year. 
Very good. Um, Mr. Russell, raise your right hand, please. Do you swear the testimony you've given this matter will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Um, plea agreement has your signature on it. Did you sign it? Yes, sir. You, you don't need to lead, lead, lean to the microphone. It'll, it's there to record you. <coughs> um, and I said, tell people it's not a rock concert. Um, <laughs> But it is important that we have you on, on the record. Uh, as long as I can hear you, you're fine. Uh, did you read the plea agreement before you signed it? Have you gone over it with Mr. Gibbs? Yes, sir. Satisfied with the advice you've received from Mr. Gibbs? Okay. Has anybody threatened you with anything, pro you know, promised you anything different uh, to get you to do this if you think you'd be better off going to trial? Okay. Very well. The court will accept Mr. Russell's plea of no contest. And on both counts, uh, there's an adjudication of guilt and time served. <coughs> Each count, $100 cost of prosecution. On, count, on uh, 718, it's $415 in court costs. Actually, it's $415 in court costs on each case. On 718, there's a $150 public defender fee, $468.47 cents restitution to Gerald Sanders and $134.97 cost of transportation to the Oklahoma County Sheriff's Office. Um, in 719 is a $100 public defender fee, $136.25 restitution to First Baptist Church of Milligan. The restitution is, now that's, is that the only one that's due in 180 days? All of the costs. All, all of the costs due in 180 days. Sorry, yeah, the, that would be all. Failing would you go to costs. collections? I assume. Um, okay. And otherwise, he can get a payment plan with the clerk. Time served. Pardon me. I'm saying otherwise, he can get a payment plan with the clerk. Right. That's true. And the other thing you can do is negotiate a payment plan with the clerk. Very good, Mr. Russell. You do technically at least have the right to appeal. Uh, any appeal would have to be filed within. Uh, 30 days, 30 days, 60 days, I don't remember. 30 days, 30 days that's what I thought. It's been a while. Uh, I, and you have the right to be represented by an attorney on appeal if you want to. Thank you, Judge. Thank you. Okay. Marty, do you need to fingerprint him? Yeah. Alexandria Slusher. Slusher. Seeing no response, Judge 22 CF 2197. State would ask for a KPS, Your Honor. All right, this one does have a bond, have a professional bond. Uh, so on this one, I'm going to set her for January 3rd, notify bondsman. With the expectation that if she, if she doesn't appear on January 3rd, we'll issue a KPS at that point. Thank you, Your Honor. Bradley Standard. Your Honor, Tim, uh, Tim Gibbs for Mr. Standard and 21 CF 3108. We uh, had some depots recently, but we are going to need to reset some of those depositions um, as some of uh, our deponents did not show. We're asking for a continuance to the next cycle. That's February 27th at 9 o'clock. Thank you, Your Honor. Chance Stapleton. Your Honor, Tim Gibbs on behalf of Mr. Stapleton, 21 CF 3291. He is present and approaching. <clears throat> Your Honor, we have been working to resolve this. I've also spoken to Mr. Stapleton about his options on this case. He has indicated that he does want a trial. However, we would be too quick on returns for subpoenas this cycle, so we'd ask to continue it to the next cycle to get that set. February 27th at 9 o'clock. Thank you, Your Honor. Katrina Turner Hasselbrink. Your Honor, Tim Gibbs for Ms. Turner Hasselbrink, 22 CF 2767. She is present and approaching. Um, we recently had modified her contact provisions in her case. Thank you uh, for that order. Uh, we're going to ask to continue this. She is currently undergoing some counseling, um, so we want to see how well that works out uh, as far as resolving this case. February 27th at 9 o'clock, then. It's her big. Can you call on the Wendy Ulrich. Wendy Ulrich. 
Uh, 22 CF 2178, Your Honor, I believe I had seen her this morning, earlier this morning. I did inform her my intention was to continue the case, but she still needed to see the judge. I do not see her. If I could pass her for right now and we can see if she's around the building somewhere. The next I have, Your Honor, is Charles Velez. Charles Velez. No response, Your Honor. 21 CF 2690. They would ask for a KPS. I don't think you Give me that case number. 21 CF 2690. that up under the 22 cases doesn't have so this is mr velez right here your honor oh, okay good <laughs> your honor this is mr charles velez 21 cf 2690 they want you on this side I'm sorry um judge we are asking for a continuance in this case um there's some video that we that we're trying to get from one of the officers that were involved um that we're in a search for that if we could continue that to try to get that video Uh, February 27th at uh, 9 o'clock. Thank you, Your Honor. Here you go. I do note that case is a year old. Yes, Judge. We had been switching his attorneys around. Sorry, Angelia Worley. Your Honor, Ms. Worley is present approaching Tim Gibbs on her behalf in 22 CF 1864. Um, we're trying to find a, a defense witness on this case, Judge. We're asking for a continuance. February 27th at 9 o'clock. Thank you, Judge. Yeah. Give me a call. Okay. Stacy Wilkerson. Stacy Wilkerson. No response, Your Honor. 21 CF 847, it's a PTI return. I'm sorry, is it 47? PTI recall, you said? It's a PTI recall, yes, ma'am. Your Honor, may I request a KPS with a 2,000 signature bond, please? No objection to that bond amount. Well, okay. Um, I don't... Bonds that she was on are no longer, no longer in place, right? If, 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 well, the other issue I had in this case was on the minute sheet from the day that she went on pretrial, the minute sheet didn't indicate that she entered a plea. However, on the pretrial form, uh, the packet that she signed, it did say with a plea to the court. Um, if she has entered a plea, then all we would be doing on this case is setting for sentencing. If she hasn't entered a plea, then we're back at square one with you know potential trials if if that's appropriate um, i guess your honor that's why i was requesting uh, a signature bond just well, to make I, sure that i don't okay it, let me be sure that i understand i'm not sure that i understand what a signature bond is that means she simply signs and doesn't put any money up she can sign herself out and then if she doesn't show up she would owe the amount okay correct we, we would call that a $2,000 OR bond. Uh, Essentially, my, my neck of the woods. And if that's what you want, that's fine. Thank you. Uh, no objection. Okay. Very good. Let's do a KPS with a $2,000 uh, own recognizance bond. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Next, Your Honor, I have Ebony Williams. Tim Gibbs on behalf of Miss Williams, 21 CF 2986. 21 CF 2987. Your Honor, I believe we are almost in the throes of resolving this case. I'd like to leave this set for Tuesday, January 3rd for docket day. Without subpoenas? Without subpoenas, that's correct. I believe, apart from Ms. Ulrich, that's all I have, Your Honor. I'm going to go see if I can find her. Um, 
And if not, I'll let you know. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Okay, very good. Uh, what I'm about to read is a list of people whose the lawyers have agreed to continue the case, each of these cases, to February 27th. So if I call your name, you're free to go. I'm going to ask, though, as I did earlier, that you wait to leave until I finish reading the list so that somebody doesn't miss their name being called because they've got people moving around them. Latoya Nelson. Uh, looks like the last name is it's Noel or Newell. It's Newell, Judge. Okay. Uh, James Ham. Trayvon Howard. Damon Hutchinson. Casey Johnson. Kevin, is it Josie? Kevin Josie, Victoria Kelly, uh, maybe it's Denise, Denise, Denise Lodge. Judge, I'm sorry, my handwriting has not gotten any better over the years. <laughs> yeah. This is Desiree. It's Desiree, Desiree Lodge. Okay. Um, Christopher Matthews, Chance Mayberry. The last, is that? It's, it's a compound name, Judge. It's Mayan Oviedo. May, Mayan Obi Oviedo, Sydney. <coughs> Matthew McConley. Jamal McRae. Dana Lewis. Nicole, is that Miloy? Miles. Oviedo. Miles. Nicole Miles. And Re Robert, I think Lamb. Robert Lamb. If I've just called your name, you're due to come back February 27th at 9 o'clock, but you're free to go today. Well, now some of these are the same names. Uh, okay. Uh, I've, I've got another, another list now. Some of these are the same names, but uh, Amanda Harville. Shirley Jones. I have Shirley. Uh, we'll check in a minute. Uh, Jacqueline Lodge. Devin Miller. Ray Mobley. Taylor Mobley. And David Nelson. So, if I just called your name there again, you're supposed to be back February 27th, but you're free to go today. That ought to reduce our numbers a bit. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> okay. If I just called your name and you have business with your lawyer, I need to ask you to do it outside the courtroom, please. Uh, do we just want to call up the people who are left one at yes. a time, get them to tell us who they are? Uh, let's start on this side of the room. Sir, come on down. Judge, that's going to be Robert Strauss. Oh, okay. Um, he has two cases on the docket, 20 CF 3247 and 21 CF 247, Charles Russell Public Defender's Office. On Mr. Strauss's cases, we have reached a plea agreement on 20 CF 3247, and then on case number 21 CF 247,
We were going to set it for trial. Mr. Strauss informs me this morning that he has a couple more witnesses. I'll leave it up to the state. I can either try to talk to them between now and next week, and if I'm going to use them, I'll list them, or we can continue with a cycle. I'll leave it up to the state. I would need to know who the witnesses are and have an opportunity to determine, because of the nature of these cases, it's very unlikely they're going to have any information that will be useful. It's a child pornography case. Which, which is the case that he's just come up with new witnesses? 21 CF 247. We have no objection to a last continuance, Your Honor, but we would be ready for trial. Um, Mr. Strauss, this case has been open for almost two years. How is it that you're just coming up with witnesses? I just came into contact with them. There was a couple a while back that I was asked to get a hold of, and I couldn't get a hold of them. They just got a hold of me. Um, tell me what you want to do. Do you want to leave it for January 3rd? Do you have subpoenas out already? No, Your Honor. Um, as he said, he's got uh, additional witnesses. That mine's a little no, 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 I, no, no. I, I, I'm not trying to push you into doing anything. I, I'm just asking what's your preference. I'll put him on for the 20, for February 27th and the trial cycle, cycle after that with a notation that there will be no further continuances. That's acceptable to say, I'm, Your Honor. Okay. That's fine. So, so we'll do that on the twenty, on the twenty-one two forty-seven case. I'm frankly not quite sure why that case is still here. It was filed in January of, of twenty twenty-one. Yes, sir. Um, on the other case, do you want me to announce the offer? Or do you want me to just bring you up the agreement, Judge? You, you can just bring it up to me. Okay. Mr. Strauss, raise your right hand, please. Do you swear the testimony you give in this matter will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, sir. Uh, we're dealing now with case 20, CF 3247, <coughs> count of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. Uh, I'm looking at a plea agreement which appears to have your signature on it. Did you sign it? Yes, sir. Did you read it before you signed it? Yes, sir. Okay. And have you gone over it with Mr. Russell? The score sheet has 41.3 total points. No objection, Your Honor. All right. Mr. Strauss, has anybody uh, proffer, uh, offered you anything that's not in this written plea agreement on this case? Has anybody threatened you or pressured you in any way to enter this plea if uh, you think you'd be better off going to trial? Okay, and I may have asked you this before. Are you satisfied with the advice you've received from yes, Mr. Sir. Russell? The court will accept Mr. Strauss's plea of no contest. In this case, he'll be a judge guilty, sentenced to 12 months of probation. Cost of supervision is waived. He's required to pay uh, court cost, uh, $100 cost of prosecution and $150 public defender <coughs> fees. Complete a substance abuse evaluation and any recommended treatment. Uh, have random urinalysis or other testing at his expense. No drugs or alcohol without a prescription. Complete a, an anger management course and have no contact with Deborah K. Howell. Um, you do need to report to probation. Uh, they'll tell you over there how to do that. And then we'll see you back here on February 27th on your other case. Thank you, Judge. You may call the other one, sir. Yeah. Uh, Richard Lindros. Charles Russell Public Defender's Office, case number is 21CF2689. And on Mr. Lindros's case, Judge, we have reached an agreement, and I have a score sheet. May I approach? Yes, sir. Yep. Yes. Mr. Lindros, raise your right hand, please. Do you swear the testimony you give in this matter will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? And this is a score sheet with 32.6 total points. No objection, Your Honor. Mr. Lindros, I'm looking at a plea agreement 
Um, with your signature on it, did you read the agreement? Sir. Have you gone over it with Mr. Russell? Satisfied with the advice you've received from him? Sir. Has anybody promised you anything or threatened you in any way to get you to sign this if you think you'd be better off going to trial? Sir. Very well. The court will accept Mr. Lindros's plea of no contest. Count one, he's being sentenced on a lesser included offense of sale, manufacture, deliver of uh, controlled substances, a second degree felony. Adjudication is withheld. He's going to be served 24 months community control, followed by 12 months probation. Super, cost of supervision is waived. He's to continue his substance abuse treatment at Bridgeway until released. Uh, be subject to random urinalysis or other testing to test for any violation of the requirement to have no drugs or alcohol without a prescription. Pay court costs, $100 cost of prosecution, $100 $150 public defender fee. Complete 75 hours of community service work. He can buy that out at $10 an hour if he wishes. Count two, as charged, an adjudication of guilt, time served. Count three, lesser included offense of no valid driver's license. Uh, adjudication of guilt and time served. I think that's everything. I need to report to probation. Good luck to you. Okay, thank, thank you, Judge. And, Your Honor, you said he could buy it out. Is that at the standard rate of $10 an hour? $10 that, yes, sir. Um, Seth Talbot. Mr. Talbot has two cases on the docket, Judge. Uh, case numbers 20. CF 2477. We passed Mr. Talbot's cases to January 3rd at 9 o'clock. Yes, sir. We're close to resolution. Uh, hopefully we'll bring in for landing. Okay. So January 3rd at 9, Judge. January 3rd at 9 Thank you, Judge. Calling a long list like that is that uh, the rest of my cases are not going to be in order. Um, oh, that's a, doesn't make any. I'm, doesn't I'm make any difference. Uh, what order you've got them to me? I'm, I'm scrambling to get them there, but it's it's not gonna it's not gonna be pretty. All right, uh, Danny Mason. Okay, I tell you what, let's just call from hey, the thing I've got to and do all left of them. I don't care what order you call them in. <laughs> let's, let's do it, do it this way. Hi, sir, what's your name? Danny Mason. Okay, Mr. Mason. Judge, we did get um, lab reports in. I'm going to need to go over those with Mr. Mason. Um, we should be able to get it, um, at least find out if we're going to trial or not fairly quickly. Um, my only problem is looking uh, five minutes ago, I realized that I actually have no office time. Everything's going to be in court until the third. Um, we can try to set it there, uh, but I'm going to suggest that uh, we do it without subpoenas. Okay, that's fine. January 3rd, no subpoenas. Thank you. Do this. Call up and make a telephone appointment. You may not get anywhere today. You may have to tr call again tomorrow because I've got to tell her to try to free up some time. Okay. Okay? Thanks, sir. Thank you. All right. Uh, let's see. Heather Kelly. Judge, I don't see where any depots have been done in the case. Um, we, 
we do have have an offer, uh, but it's a community control offer. Let me move to continue it. I think it's not been continued before. Apparently, there no objection. February twenty seventh at nine o'clock. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Call and make an appointment to come in and see me, and we'll go over everything. Okay, at least go over the videos and all. Yeah. All right. For sure. Thank you. Okay. February seventh. Uh, twenty seventh. Twenty seventh. Yeah. February twenty seventh. All right, uh, Sierra McDonald. Judge, I've not had an opportunity to go over things with Ms. McDonald yet. Um, and it's a child neglect case. It's a level six. I don't see, I see a score sheet in the, the file. Excuse me? Um, I can try to get it done by the third judge. Move it on the third. No subpoenas. Thank you. Expect a phone call from me, okay? All right. All right. Um, sir, you over there? No, I'm just kidding. Ma'am, call. What's your name again? I just said. Judge, this is going to be a post plea pretrial diversion. That you're not doing it with a plea agreement? Um, no, Judge, I don't have any specifics on what she needs. Well, okay. It is now. Oh. Yeah, it's one that you I didn't have before. I missed the first part of the. I just walked in. Yeah. Uh, Caitlin Hodges. Uh, what is the Ms. Rivers made an offer for pretrial intervention. Um, and then I asked you earlier today if you would require a plea on PTIs. Oh, yes. So, yes. Yeah, the question, well, if there are no conditions, I mean, I don't know what, con typically there are conditions along with pretrial intervention. If there are no conditions other than court costs and attorney's fees, I can do it without a written plea agreement. If there are any others, it's better to have a, a written plea agreement so that there's a record of... Yeah, you know, part of the problem is that such, such as drug treatment or there are yeah. uh, yes for the PTI there are conditions. The alternative would be a plea to a misdemeanor. No, no, no I, I, I right. From, Do from you the, have set conditions in this county? From court, courts from the court's perspective, PTI has its own conditions, but frequently a pretrial intervention plea involves. Things such as payment of restitution or completion of drug treatment, which is not a standard condition of PTI. Uh, I don't know whether to order any of those things unless I have a written plea agreement. If you don't want any conditions other than the standard conditions of PTI and court costs, I can do that without a written plea agreement. Looking at the state's offer, it does say a 10-month term, um, uh, get a substance abuse evaluation, any counseling that's deemed necessary. Okay. Do you want me to draft up an agreement on that real quick? We can no. set it for docket day, Your Honor, just, and we just, can work it out. Just list. Okay. No, we don't need to make her come back. Just list them for me. It, it's what I've got, and in, in it's substance rather scosh. Substance yeah. abuse evaluation, any treatment deemed necessary. Um, yeah, may I? Yeah. Because this is... Okay, I need to clarify something. My office is requiring, a, if it's a PTI, a plea to the felony with okay. PTI as a condition. Okay. Therefore, we do need a written plea agreement for that. Okay. 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 I hate to I'll, do it. I'd hate to do it to you, but, well, I don't know. Do you want to try to write one up now? or I can try to write one up on the at third. the end of the... The date, it won't take me but a couple of minutes. I, you'll okay. need me to read it to you, but... No, no, it's okay. Well, let's see. I'll see if I can read it. 
Go All ahead right. and do that. All right, go ahead and have a seat. We'll call you up so that you don't have to come back. All right, ma'am, what's your name? Judge, I'm going to ask that we pass this until the 3rd. Ms. Jones, um, call up and make an appointment, or I'll give you a call. Do I have a good number for you? You should. Okay. I think this one's going to be able to be resolved. Judge. All right, Ms. Jones, we're going to bring you back next week, January 3rd, see if we can resolve it that morning. Judge, I will say uh, the case has never been continued before. She was just arraigned back on November, but there's a, an offer in the file of one. No, it's, it's fine. This is a clear continuance on January 3rd. All right, ma'am. If you don't hear anything from me by tomorrow afternoon, you call me, okay? Do you have a card? Ma'am, what's your name? Wendy who? This, she's my client. She's she just came back. I can take her real quick. Okay. Your Honor, I had Ms. Ulrich earlier. Um, she had stepped out, but she is present. Tim gives on her behalf 22 CF 2178. Judge, we're asking for a continuance to next cycle. Um, I need an appointment with Ms. Ulrich to discuss her case. No objection. February 27th at uh, 9 o'clock. Be sure you've seen it. Yes, sir. What's the case number? I don't have that on this docket, but I guess it is. She may have already been reset or already handled it. I don't remember that name, but um, on the 29th. Okay, you need to come back from Well, I, hold on. Well, well, if we if we've is she even on today's docket? No, okay. she's not. Uh, and judge, it doesn't look um, from what. Her boyfriend was telling me uh, we had to withdraw from her. So well, but that's what I'm saying. Let me pull her up on the 29th. What do you remember her case number? It is 22. I was going to go ahead. If we need to change lawyers for her, I'd rather do that today uh, because. It, Either way, that kind of. Your Honor, the, there was a motion and order, a proposed order sent over, so it probably just hasn't been signed yet. Uh, I don't even see that it, I don't see that it's been, that it's been filed yet. Okay. Um, it may have just recently been filed, so it may be. It's fairly new for you, us. You know that you have filed a yes. Okay, so Correct. the Office of Regional Conflict Council is going to have to be. Uh, you said something about her boyfriend or. Yeah, he was in court, and he's he he gave me. Is he represented by the PD? I don't believe so, Judge. I believe she was represented by somebody, or that she has a co-defendant. Okay. That's not her boyfriend. Well, in any event, let me go ahead and orally grant. Public defender leave to withdraw okay. and appoint Office of Regional Conflict, Conflict Council today, but there's no reason to make her come back two days from now if she's getting a new lawyer today. I, I mean, I don't care whether we set her for. Um, Judge, you want me to tell her to go ahead and enter a plea of not guilty on her own behalf, and then that would wait, serve to arraign her. Oh. Okay. Sorry, if the 29th is an arraignment, I'm sorry, I know she got on for today. She may not be on for today. 
No, you need to be back here day after tomorrow. It'll be a different judge <coughs> day after tomorrow. Uh, but you need to be back. I'm, Flowers isn't here anymore. Uh, 29th at one time. 1.30 in the afternoon. Uh, we'll get word to your new lawyer. It's going to be Ms. Flowers, I think. Is she the only one from uh, Regional Conflict Council? Okay. Yeah, it'll be Ms. Flowers. She, she won't know who you are, probably. But you need to be here to enter your plea and meet your lawyer on Thursday at 1.30. Thank you. Uh, the next case I have, Judge, is Eddie McBride. Mr. McBride is approaching. Judge, um, I spoke uh, with the new prosecutor just in general, and I'm going to ask her specifically to review his case for a possible drug court referral. No, no. Control date here will be February 27th. Thank you, Judge. All right, you've got today as a control date, but you may get another date with, if I find out about another date because you're in. So right, right now it's February 27th. You plan on being in court on that date, and you hear otherwise from me. Judge, I just filed reciprocal discovery on this that deals with the possession of controlled substance uh, issue. Um, looking at it. It has been continued before. What's the case number? Case number is 22 CF 2050. Basically, she's got a, a medical marijuana card. And I don't know if that's going to affect the, uh, the state's offer or not. It's a, a 22 case, Judge. 46 22 CF 2050. Taylor L. Mooney. It's not the... I've got that case number here, but it's not... What's your name? Taylor Mooney. M-O-O-N-E-Y. 22 CF 2052? 2050. 2050, Judge. It was our Band-Aid. Oh. No, our yeah. Band-Aid's correct. I don't know why I said 52. 2050 on the docket today. Uh, I've got the file saying 1227, Judge. Yep, I got that case with Mooney's name on it. Now, I show it set for docket day on January 3rd. On January 30? Third. Third? Um, let's just pass it to the third then. Maybe by then the state will... Well, uh, hold on. Maybe we, we, That may have been earlier today because it shows the con pretrial conference was set on the third today. Okay. Well, she may have been on a list to continue earlier. She may have been, Judge. Well, so are you telling me you're not going to be ready to go on the third? No, just let me talk with the prosecutor, see if that changes anything. Okay. Um, All right. When did you send that? Uh, December 21st. Okay. Ma'am, come back on the third, okay? Oh. Hopefully we'll have it resolved. Okay. All right. Sir, with the hat on backwards, are you here for court today? No, here. Okay. And then behind you, no? Who, who is here for court today? You just tourists? 
Raise your hand. Anybody else who's here for court today? Come on down. Come on up. Yeah, anybody else who thinks they've got court today? Come on down. Let's talk with you. In the gray paint. And tell me what your name is, please. Casey Johnson. Casey Johnson. That's the one I think I told her to have a seat. And I got her right up for. Oh. Okay. Anyone else? So we don't we don't have anybody else who's here for court today. That's good news. <laughs> good news except for the patrol peer list. Hey, we're, we're, we're doing deals, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to be here tomorrow? Your I will be here tomorrow. Sounds yes. very good. I will not be here on Thursday. I, it's probably Judge Rasmussen, but I don't know. I, I was, they tried to get me to come Thursday, but I'm, unfortunately I have a medical appointment Thursday that I can't miss. So. Thank you for being here. Oh, we'll have more fun tomorrow. <laughs> That's good. good. Yeah. And yeah. tomorrow is all inmates. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Unless we have some strays from today. Yeah, yeah well, there'll probably be a few yeah. wander in. If, if your business is done here, by all means, you don't need to hang around. Thank you. Thank you. See you in the morning. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, we got a bunch of no-shows. So okay. okay. Yeah. Probably. I, I need at least somebody representing We're both here. sides. Yeah. <laughs> we got it. Right. What? Uh, yeah. Gary McMullen. Case number. Uh, <laughs> and Judge, I'm showing that this defendant was released on a $3,000 signature bond on November 4th of this year. The state would ask for a capius. Yeah, capius, no bond. Case number? That actually, Your Honor, was we called a null cross on that quite a while back, ma'am. Oh. I can find the case number if we need it. Okay. Hang on, this thread here. Okay, our case number is going to be 222520. Sorry, Case number? Uh, 22CM. Uh, I see the public defendant. Is it, whose case is that? J. Hodges, I think. Hodges. Right, okay. So she's accounted for. <laughs> okay, now I think you can leave. <laughs> I think it's just the two of them. Guy that I appointed counsel for isn't as close to the isn't as close to the uh, guidelines as he, I thought he was. Judge, I can call up Ms. Johnson. Okay. I'm getting uh, her case and Ms. Hodges confused. I don't know that hers is a PTI. I do know that um, uh, we set the. Um, alleged victim for deposition. He's not been cooperative. He didn't show up for the deposition. In fact, they weren't able to get him served. I'm just going to go ahead and announce ready for trial on it. And um, Okay. Well, let's go ahead and set her for the third. If you work it out and it turns out it was PTI by then. That's fine. The third of January? Yes, ma'am. I'm here from Missouri. In a rental. Mr. Williams, what case is this, please? Hodge, this is... Uh, Casey Johnson, it's 22 CF 1485. Yeah, the one I was thinking of was in his office. 
Is it set for January 27th or February 27th? January 27th is what we previously set her for, I think. All right. Okay. Do this. You might have to come back then, but probably not. I'm going to talk with the prosecutor. Um, and if they can't get a hold of the guy, I'm pretty sure they'll have to just drop it. Okay? Okay. All right. Happy New Year. Thank you. You too. Mr. Williams, if I may, on this case. Yeah. Would you mind following up with me before pre-trial? Because if there are issues in the case, I'd like to address them before it gets set for you. A absolutely. Thank absolutely. You. I'm. Your predecessor attended the depot, and so I didn't. I didn't make the connection that that you were okay. aware. No, no. I'm just letting you know I'm willing to discuss the matter. All right, and all you need is that it says referred to P. I'm sorry. I'm all you need is that it says referred to PTI, or do you need me to put uh, controlled substance evaluation and treatment? Yes, please. <laughs> and Judge, my understanding is the plea will be taken in abeyance, um, and then automatically withdrawn once he successfully completes. That, that's that's yeah. the way PTI works, yeah. Judge, I'm old enough to remember when we did them without police. Yeah, well, that that is, sure. is right, Your Honor. Yeah. But sometimes we would allow to enter a PTI without requiring a plea agreement. Yeah, I know. But now we're doing it that way. Yeah. Okay, come on, okay. Okay. Can All right, let me get your. Ma'am, you understand you got a right to go to trial. You got a right to go to trial. half a day. I think you and I talked about all that before. Mm -hmm. Let me go ahead and get your signature right there. I think what February 27th is going to look like. My luck, I'll be back. <laughs> and nobody will be able to find out about it. And I can explain to you in more detail. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. Sorry. He left this morning. Somebody left this morning. What does it say? Possession. Possession. OSS. Right of the end. 25. Oh, is it my one? Yes. Sure. Yeah, just for court costs. Now that would still be on your record, though. Would that be a felony? No, no, it's a misdemeanor. It's a little first degree misdemeanor. It's a maximum of a year and a thousand. Judge, mm -hmm. state's made a new offer, a uh, plea to stipulated lesser of possession paraphernalia for court costs and a withheld. Not PTI? No, and not PTI. Oh. Withheld and time served? What? No, well, if you do time served, she's going to be adjudicated. Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay. It was just withheld and costs. Got it. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> not one I'm not used to seeing, but that's fine. <laughs> it's a, a okay. first offense, and it's uh, for THC. Ma'am, raise your right hand, please. Do you swear the testimony you give in this matter will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, sir. Okay. Now. Let me be sure that I've got it right. The offer here is for you to plead no contest to a lesser included offense of, tell me again. Possession of paraphernalia, first degree misdemeanor, maximum year in county jail, $1,000 fine. 
Right. And the result of which of that plea will be an adjudication withheld and court costs, which are... 270, Your Honor, for a misdemeanor. 270 plus counsel fees, $100 cost of prosecution. No, Your Honor, no. 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 For the paraphernalia because of the FDL charge, is that why we need the $100? Yes. Oh, because There's cost of prosecution. Offender. Judge said cost of prosecution, and we don't take that. Okay, all right. So it, it's basically $270 in court costs and $100 public defender fee. Yes. You okay with that? Yes, sir. Uh, it sounds like a pretty good deal to me. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> okay. All right. Going once, going twice. Old. Sold. Sold. <laughs> uh, the court will accept. I'm sorry. What's your name, please? Ms. Caitlin Hodges. Ms. Hodges. Yes, sir. I just had your file <laughs> open in front of me, but I wasn't sure it was you. Uh, the court will accept Ms. Hodges' plea. Adjudication of guilt to the lesser included offense is uh, withheld. Yes, sir. Uh, and she's charged with $100. Uh, public defender fees and $270 in court costs, 180 days to pay those. Uh, if you can't pay them within 180 days, then you've got two options. One is it gets sent to collections. The other is you can negotiate a payment plan with the clerk, which is better than letting it go to collections. Yes, sir. If it goes to collections, it starts messing with your driver's license and stuff. Yes, sir. <laughs> okay. Good luck. All Thank right, you, Judge. Thank you. Y'all have a good day. Okay. Good luck, Ms. Hodges. No, I said we your honor there shouldn't be a need for fingerprints, right? No. Right. No. Very good. Thank you very Everybody much. Everybody have a good day. I'll see you in the morning. Yes. Thank you, Your Honor.